son of a bitch. Hey guys, welcome to episode four of Super Enabler Bros. I'm Jason ah! from Corpse Flood Gaming, accompanied by my excellent co-host, Chris, the old ass retro gamer. All right, it's been a while since we yeah. had an episode because uh, Chris's work has been kicking his ass. So it's true. <laughs> we, uh, it's true. So we finally got together and figured, let's get this done. Let's get a new episode out now. Come on, these uh. These pickups are piling up, and not uh, for me. <laughs> for, for, for once, I'm speak for yourself, bro. For, yeah, you, you said you took a bit of a uh, time off from I'm a little bit of a hiatus from the collecting right now. I cannot condone this. No, I understand. But I'm but I'm still buying other things. So oh, that's good. As long as money is being wasted, I'm happy. It's just <laughs> happening. It's just not happening in the game sector. Oh, that's, that's a bummer. I've been, uh, well, I found a way to effectively get my mail more often. And I'm a kind of a jerk and I'm abusing it a bit. <laughs> so, oh, I can get my mail more than like never. Man, what's going on on these Amazon deals and shit? What? So, so <laughs> yeah, it was actually just like two bursts, but they've, they're all taking their time to show up at, different times and it's uh it's it's piling up too bad uh my time at home isn't piling up as much but uh, that's, an, uh, that's, uh, that's another thing so uh, i know i talk to you pretty often but for people not who don't <laughs> what <have you> been? <laughs> uh, what i've been doing yeah what have you been up working to? besides working yeah. working a lot yeah, I hear trying you. to play games whenever I can, trying to watch movies whenever I can, trying not to fall asleep once I get home from work every day. <laughs> I feel all those in the marrow of my bones. Yes. <laughs> That's basically exactly me. Not yeah. not having a whole lot of uh, the free time now recently. Yeah, right. Everyone's Yeah, everyone's talking about quarantine like like all it is is sitting inside and being bored and you're like, "How do I get some of that?" Yeah, so, I mean, even though I'm, I you know, I come home from work and I just stay here. Yeah, I still don't have a lot of time to th- uh, time to do anything because the moment I sit down, I fall asleep. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Like if, if I'm not playing something that's like super involving, like a shmup or something, I'm like, oh, it's like a cutscene with a lot of dialogue. I'm like, oh. I try, I try though to, to to play stuff. I'm always trying to. I always have plans. I have big plans at the start of each day. I, just yeah, never seems to work out that way. Once I get to that part of the day where I would be doing it, I'm um, captain intends to do lots. Yes, but, uh, is forced to do lots of other things that aren't the things that I want to do. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm captain doesn't follow through. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. sometimes, yeah, it kind of sucks. Life sucks sometimes. Why we got to be yeah. grown ups? I don't know. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, since the last episode, I've been playing a bit. I beat a couple of games, but uh, nothing too fancy. Yeah. But uh, uh, did you manage to play your roulette games at all? I did. Both so of them. If you are watching and you're new to this, uh, we every episode we do a backlog roulette where we basically take an actual roulette wheel. Ta-da. And uh, we have 38 games on a list, and we spin the wheel, and we pick a game from our backlogs to finally play. Because we yes. always buy games with intent to play them. But when you get a huge library like the two of us have, sometimes uh, some games fall through the cracks that you're like, I really want to play that. Sometimes a lot of them fall through the cracks. Right now I'm going to play this game instead. <laughs> so um, I know a lot of gamers are kind of... Uh, Guilty of that. And uh, we just decided to throw this together and kind of help ease up the situation. And hopefully you guys will play along with us. We do one every episode. So around the end of this episode, we'll be doing another one. 
And don't forget, we got two of them now. Yeah. Last episode, uh, we did a RPG one as well. We usually, um, this is just rules we put on ourselves because we've seen a not have as much trouble keeping up with the current gen games. But we also love our old school games. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of put a stipulation on our backlog roulette excludes current gen and we go from previous gen back. And it makes for a good variety. Yes. I need to start playing more of these older games in my collection. Exactly. Which is you know, especially why something that the roulette is a brilliant idea on Jason's part. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm loving it so far because it's got I'm me. enabling your ego. <laughs> I'm de- I'm deflating that. I don't <laughs> I don't need any more ego. Just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, but I've been loving it so far, and I want to keep it going because it's, yeah. it's been a lot of fun. It's giving uh, me a reason to to like make time to play some games. Exactly. Um, yeah, we also added another little like kind of try to because we we said how busy we are. We try to keep it to like about. 10 hours or less it could be a half an hour game really if for all we care but as long as we're yeah. playing games out of our backlogs that's a win uh last time i got go go Ackman, and for the rpg uh pick i got uh legend of dragoon yeah and chris got i got uh battle of olympus on the nes for my regular roulette and for my rpg roulette i got kingdom hearts sweet so how did you enjoy both of these games um i played battle for olympus um i want to say a a fair amount never got around to beating it it's uh, a side-scrolling rpg light it's kind of like zelda 2 or uh, faxanadu like Which is why I wanted it because I love those two games. Yeah, exactly. And, I want a lot of way to get it too. Yeah, I found it at the Midwest Gaming Classic, the last one that we went to, I think. No, <laughs> it was the previous. It was the previous year. It was uh, 2018. Funny thing is, I ordered it because it was like, oh, it's actually not that much. And I saw it in someone's video, and I was like, this looks really cool. So I ordered it, and then I opened one of my monthly uh, video game boxes, and there it is. <laughs> so there's so. Currently have an extra copy, and I believe it's going to our friend Church. Oh, so, <laughs> he always looks out in these situations. <laughs> see, see, see. Yeah. Always yeah. making out like a bandit. Yeah. I, uh, but it's a it's a decent game. It's not nearly as good as Zelda Two or even Fax Xanadu. Um, yes. But it's just it's got the Greek mythology twist to it, and it's it's fun. It's just it's a little tedious. It's just a lot of like running around and backtracking, running around and backtracking, and oh yeah, yeah, just, that's, that's kind of old. Uh, yeah. Like so that. I I wasn't super motivated to keep on playing it because it was kind of boring me. So I I I I still want to play it. I mean, I still want to beat it, but I was just kind of like, I'd rather just play something else. <laughs> yeah, I remember one time you were playing it, and I did a uh, course into playing something else. Yeah, you're like, hey guys, how about we do this? I'm like, oh. <laughs> We'll, we'll talk more on that in a little bit. But, a little bit, a uh, little bit. <laughs> how about uh, Kingdom Hearts? Did you, did you give that a good go? Yes, I did. I, I was playing... So, there's the Battle for Olympus, for those who don't think I have it. <laughs> but uh, I do oh. own Kingdom Hearts on the PS2, but I was, I've was i been playing the PS4 compilation version. I have the, the story so far. And this has a Kingdom Hearts final mix on it. I don't know what's final or mixy about it, but... Since I've never played the original all that much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, uh, I I picked up the all-in-one thing. I think I showed it on the last episode. Yeah, with that part three in it also. In it also, yeah. So it's that's but, something um, I've been meaning to. I've I've dabbled in them, but I've never gotten very far into them. Yeah, I, I bought the original one back when it first came out. And I want to say I played it for maybe an hour, and I was just kind of like, eh. <laughs> the first one, the one that has the Nightmare Before Christmas in it, isn't it? I don't know. I never got. I remember, that far yet. that's that's the most I played. My uh, my friend bought it when it came out back in the day, and uh, he was all about it because that level was in it. I'm pretty sure it was the first one. If not, it was the second one. Anyway, mm-hmm. that was my first uh, time playing those games, and I, you know, we kind of traded off playing it while I was hanging out with him, and uh, I ended up getting one of them. Uh, what is it? The not one or two. There's the other one for PS2. Uh, I always forget what it's called because they always have stupid. Three sixty 
three sixty eight by five or whatever or four. Oh, it's something else. Something else is kind of stupid. Uh, re- birth, re- birth by sleep. <laughs> re- recoded. Oh, recoded. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many of these games. That's the problem I have. That's why I bought this collection because I don't even know what order they go in. Yeah. Yeah. Regarding yeah, regarding uh, chain of memories. As far as uh, as far as RPG series go, it, or game series in general, it's got the most convoluted. Yeah. No shit. Overly overly com- Another complex. reason why I've been avoiding playing them. <laughs> yeah. It's like. It's almost one of those things where you like just play it and turn your brain off because you're just trying to make sense. You'll just go cross-eyed. Yeah. So, so that's what I've heard. Anyway, uh, I have, I have most of them on their own anyway. But I figured that all in one package was only on for like thirty Canadian. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's worth not? it. That's totally worth it. Why the hell not? So, uh, yeah, there is a there game that looks like it's a lot of fun. So, did you did you enjoy it? What I have played of it so far, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's more of an action RPG and I don't have a problem with that at all. It's just that it is so slow and so boring and there's so much dialogue and so much like bad a, horrible dialogue. <laughs> one of those games where you more just want to like you don't even actually care about the story, you just want to get to more of the action. Yeah, stuff. and it's like the the camera in the game is terrible. I mean, I understand it's from a PlayStation 2 game, but you think that when they remaster it they could have fixed something. Yeah, exactly. You know, but the jumping when you jump, it's super floaty. It's just I just and I mean I'm on the Alice in Wonderland scenario right now, which is a, the okay. first Disney world you go to. Okay. And just to get there was a freaking chore. Like it really tested my patience, type of thing. Oh. But I'm like, nope, I gotta play this. I gotta play this. So I'm I'm I've been in the Alice in Wonderland segment for probably two weeks now. Ooh. Yeah, I've been. Uh... I've been trucking along on my mine as well. I I beat my regular roulette, and uh, and I've been playing chipping away at, at my other one. Do you think you'll continue with your RPG or? Do yeah, you I'm gonna you're... I'm gonna keep playing. I mean, I mean, I want to be able to beat it so I could play part two because part two's got Tron in it. Oh yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah. So exactly. that's why I want to. I'm I was kind of like, yeah, I, I need to play through this so I can see the Tron segments of part two. Yeah. And from what I can tell, he's also they're also in another one in here on this compilation too. They show them on the Kingdom Hearts two final mix. Sweet. If you look so, at the well, back, yeah. you see them. Well, you're a lot like me in the same uh, the same way <laughs> that I can't just skip to a second one or a third one. I have yeah. to. I want to start from the beginning too. Even so. if the storyline is convoluted as shit. Even if it's a hundred hour game before the next game or whatever, yeah, shit. you know, like but these RPG series. That I'll I, I'll keep on going with it. <laughs> right, right on. I'm uh, yeah. I I got Gogo Ackman as I said, and I played through it. It's an action platformer with the Akira Toriyama, I believe. Uh, it's the Dragon Ball, yeah, Dragon Ball Chrono Trigger artist. So it was in his art style. It was. A really creative platformer. It was pretty easy, actually. I was, I was expecting it to be tougher, especially being a Super Famicom game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was just super creative and a, a lot of fun. It was like a real blast to play. So yeah, I didn't I have, know about it until you brought it up. I have, uh, I have two and three also. They're really cheap, and uh, oh, I, I don't remember how I even heard of them. But I was like, that looks cool as hell. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of variety to it. It doesn't. It didn't take very long, and uh, I think it, it didn't outstay its welcome. It was just like the perfect length of a game, so it was a good afternoon. I don't think I had to leave it on and do anything. Yeah, it was just an afternoon, and it was done. Just leave so, your Super Nintendo want to walk away from it as it's paused all day long, type of yeah. thing. Like yeah, you used to so, do back in the day, like I did with Ninja Gaiden. Exactly, <laughs> and I remember being more busy like the next couple of days because I was actually like. While I'm at it, I should go after two and three, and I just never, never got to it. So that's a that's a tale for another time. I'll hopefully jump Aww. back into those because I really liked it. And it also go go remi- Ackman tales. <laughs> it, it reminded me that I also got the uh, Gambare Goemon game. So oh. to go with Mystical Ninja, I got two, three, and four of that series. So I need to get those. I kind of really Mystical want Ninja. I love Mystical Ninja. Yeah, so fun. I really want to get. As speaking of Goemon, uh, Goemon's Great Adventure for N sixty four. I have the other one. I, I rented one. one of I rented one of the two back in the day, and I loved it. Actually, a friend of mine locally owns it, and we've done trades. Uh, 
Make it happen. And he's not a huge collector, but he refused to get rid. Like he traded. Make it happen. He traded pretty much any of the other N64 games I was interested in. No problem, but he wasn't letting go go in Mon's adventure. He just had a kid though a little while ago. I should, maybe I should ask him again. Oh, Guilt him into it, Jason. Guilt him into it. Give a case of papers for it. <laughs> Give it to me before your kids trash it. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want any bite marks in it. Yeah, it was uh <laughs> it was uh yeah. Um yeah, and it's it's gone up actually since uh since I've been keeping an eye on it. So that's that's not fun, but of course it's Nintendo sixty four. Right, right now, the retro prices are like they were ridiculous. Now they're like over the top ridiculous. Because like, everyone's at home trying to buy shit to keep them occupied. So yeah. Oh, it's r- ridiculous. Like everything's almost like even common games like yeah. Final Fantasy VII and stuff is like double the price it was like a couple months ago. It's over, over the top. Today I looked up a copy on eBay of Stargate for the Super Nintendo. Why would I pay sixty dollars for that? <laughs> yeah. Why? I can't. I can't think of a reason. You should probably. People do are that. people are crazy. I've got it for the Genesis. I had well, yeah, because I gave it to you. <laughs> That's where I got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I just, I just. That's one of the reasons why I haven't been buying anything, is because the prices are just going crazy. Yeah, it's and I'm kind not, of a bummer. I'm not going to pay three times what it's worth. I'll just wait. Yeah, that's exactly how I am. I'm, I'm a collector, but I'm a cheap collector. And yeah, I'm, paid I'm thrifty as fuck. Like I, I own a lot of like the pricier games I want, and I just got. For where I live, I've got an amazing luck of finding things like, shit like Chrono Trigger, or Earthbound, or really a lot of the pricey RPGs that I'm like are on my list. I'm like, uh, I really want it, but I don't think I. Two hundred dollars on it, kind of thing. Cool. So, the only time I'll spend a lot of money on games is when I'm at the Midwest Gaming Classic. That's usually it. Yeah, and you've you've got a you've got a pricier uh, thing to go after with yours because you go for the complete in box games too. Yep. Um, the only uh, retro system that I've got to have the case for is my Master Genesis. System. Oh, but, oh uh, Master System, yeah. Yeah, Master System. I mean, I I don't hate the boxes, but I'm running out of room in this game game room as. <laughs> It is. Why did and, they got bought all these new shelves? Yeah, <laughs> that's why I, I got to actually make new shelves. These uh, these figures and amiibos and crap are going to be going away <gasps> in a few weeks. Well, not going anywhere, but like yeah, out of the house. Not okay. on, it's not on the walls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but they're going to be. Uh, yeah, it's going to look like the uh, AVGN behind you. He's got all those shelves behind him in those videos now. Exactly the, the Genesis games in one row. Yep. <laughs> but uh, I see I see that and I cringe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the collector me going like why? Yeah, they're all they, they, you know, it's yeah, it's cuz they're just the only collection of his that that makes sense to me is his NES, but his NES collection's set up like a library. Yeah. With only like two different sides in that, cor- in that corner. Yeah. <laughs> I actually considered doing that in my living room with some bookshelves. Get one, get like a magazine rack, but with like shelves on it, so you can just spin around and look at your NES games and shit. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, but also weird. Not. Walk, walk, walk <laughs> in and Hi, he got rid of all his bookshelves, and he's got like eighty comic book racks. <laughs> yeah, that'd be weird. Two for my Nintendo powers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, my old about, copies of Game Pro. You, the outside of the game room is where all my other collections are and uh thanks to covid the borders are closed and i can't get to ikea and get my display cases i plan to buy in april still you guys don't have ikeas in canada i think we do but it's uh four hours away you know i was already planning to go that way no bueno no (laughs) no i'm not going anywhere with uh, what's going on anyway so it's uh either way kind of sucks but uh, yeah, so there's going to be a big restructuring of this. Uh, but I keep getting the stuff in the mail that I intended to have the display cases for. And so that sucks ass because now I've just got a pile of bo- boxes like with my Final Fantasy VII Remake Collector's Edition. Oh, God. <laughs> i got my Play Arts Cloud just sitting in the box because I'm like, ah, I don't dare put them on a, you know, a little shelf right now. Like I want to... No. 
I'm a uh, I'm crazy also, and I ordered the rest of the team and Sephiroth for the play arts. Because apparently, I hate having money, so <laughs> you're allergic to it. Got to get out of the house. Away from me. You know, <laughs> always trying to earn it, but then as soon as I get it, yeah. What did I want? It's this like for? hell. Get away! Touch me! It's all wet. <laughs> it smells like wet dog. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's basically my big goal in the next little while is to get all that kind of organized and Good plan. set up not looking like a big hoarder mess yeah. of cool stuff. I finally, yeah, I finally, like, was it two months ago, finally got off my ass and decided to get those new bookshelves and all that to reorganize because I was completely out of space for everything. It looks great. So now it's, now it's all organized and I got room for expansion if I need to. Aggressive expansion. Or buying it's... things I can't afford. Just, but I'm not. Like, you don't see me. Grow, you know, I'm not sad about it. Yeah, I know. Hey. It's me too. Like, hey. oh, I'm out of space. Hey. I'm by this giant statue or this big, huge figure that I might show in a minute. Oh, <laughs> do now! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> oh so, man so yeah even I'm, even zombie yeah. man wants to see it he's like nodding his head like yes hell yeah waldo Come on, dude. yeah so uh yeah as i was saying um got extremely off topic but uh yeah. i'm gonna keep going on the legend of dragon. i've been loving it it's actually one of the better uh ps1 rpgs i've played so far um i love the battle system in it the story is pretty cool and it's not you know doesn't feel dated. I'm ready to do it. So, yeah, you know, I know why uh, they're still clamoring for a sequel. Yeah, sequel or a remake. A reboot, a people, yeah, remake. Yeah, a lot of people saying like, uh, you know, asking the question like, what game would you like to see get the Trials of Mana and Final Fantasy VII remake treatment? Legend of Dragoon. And everyone's saying that. I'm surprised. Yeah, with how good it is, that uh, it's not. What's the problem? I don't know. Stupid idiots. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah. Um I can't wait to beat the I'm I'm definitely gonna beat this game. It's it's a hell of a lot of fun. It's kind of weird. Uh our friend Church told me it's like a hundred hour game. He says he's seen it in multiple sources. I checked uh how long to beat. That's usually my go-to. Mm -hmm. Go on howlongtobeat.com and they say it's like forty six to 60 hours so well, it's like breath of the wild it just depends on how much time you're willing to put into it then exactly it's probably got it's probably has to do with like side you know side missions exploration want to see every little corner of the world type of thing yeah we were just talking about it on the last uh game tenants uh when we were talking about uh xenoblade chronicles coming out and those being like ridiculously long games that's a the definitive off, one and, uh, and i said i was kind of scared to start one of those because if i like a game enough and they're not super grindy feeling or like waste of time fetch quests. I get right into the, the side quests on games and I love exploring. So mm -hmm. if it's done right, it can hook me for a hundred hours. So we'll see. Um, we'll do a more in depth with our RPG. We said we'd go uh, a couple episodes in between. Yeah. Although we did take a, uh, a month in between episodes, which wasn't planned. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> so maybe maybe on the next episode, we'll uh, do our final deliberation on our RPGs, try. yes. Or try or not try. We're pretty, we're pretty lax around here. We, do kind of... or do not. There is no try. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, stick around and um, hopefully make a list of 38 games and you can play along in the roulette with us. Yes. Do yeah, now. That. All right. Uh, I don't I know. I don't know if I really want to go into this section now because he told Why? me he only picked up two games, but, uh, but they're but they're cool games. Let's, let's show us some quick tips. Okay. I uh, want to see what you got. Ah. Uh, well, I ordered one game. So technically, I I ordered this in March and it just showed up within the last month. Doesn't count. <laughs> Man. Yeah. But I ordered the Devil May Cry Four Special Edition. From, ja from the Japans. Cool. Well, did it not come out over here? Uh, not physically, it didn't. Oh, that's dumb. So the only oh, place you can get this is on the, the PS4. Uh... Yeah, they never released this on... They never released this physically for the 
Xbox One, just for the PS4. Okay. And only in Japan. I was going to say, I've seen the one, two, three. Yeah, there's the, the, HD, re- the HD collection, yeah. And then the uh, reboot game. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get all of the um, Devil May Cry games for this for the PS4. I wanted to get all of them because I have five. I had five already, um, and then I picked up the HD collection, and I was like, okay, let's just do all of it. And then I ended up buying the remaster of DMC, and then this was the last one I needed. Sweet. And I found out about this through It's Rocket Sauce because he was talking about it on one of his streams, and I was like, yeah, I want to get all of them for the PS4, and he said, the only place you can get it physically is on the PS4 from Japan through PlayAsia, so that's what was I did. It, was it expensive? Uh, it was like 25 I want to say. Oh, that's that ain't it's bad not, it's not too bad, yeah. Um, yeah, you've actually said a couple times, I think, that you've always wanted to get into the series, and you never really did it, but 5, what, you were watching, was it Musty? I was watching Musty Hobbit stream 5, and I was like, this looks amazing. I need to get into this, this series. I can second that. Was amazing. That was my one of my favorite games I played last year, by far. Like it was yeah. in my top three, I think. And I had played a little bit of the first one when it first came out, but I think I had weird expectations for what it was, or what it was, okay. what it ended up being. My expectations were totally different, so I was just kind of not digging it. But um, now it's been how long since that came out? I think I'm over it. <laughs> okay. Were you expecting something like? Cause I was expecting was, something more like Resident Evil, I think. Yeah, I was gonna say because like I think they they mentioned a lot about how it was like from the makers of Resident Evil. Or, I remember reading somewhere also that it was like originally supposed to be a Resident Evil game, and they didn't like the direction that it was going, so they just tooled it, turned it into something else. Yeah, because at first it was supposed to be some kind of spinoff. Well, yeah, yeah, I liked it. Uh, I I beat the first one when it came out, and I never got into two or three. Like I never picked them up or anything i uh when the movie galleries were all closing and going out of business my wife was the manager at our local one and i boxed up a whole bunch of games uh looking back now i wish i had looked more through the older games but uh mm-hmm. but i grabbed the devil may cry two and three so that's how i got those i've since upgraded i've got the little box set they have for the ps2 ones and mm-hmm. i've got the collection for the 360 but um i've always i've always been a pretty big fan uh was it two that's kind of different two or yeah three. her two is okay the one that everyone complains about is the remaster or the remake or the reboot yeah. and honestly that was a good game just it's some like, of the, some of the direction they took, like the game itself all play. the complaints are about his hair <laughs> yeah to play is fun yeah I, I thought it was stupid they did some kind of slap in the face things with the story, but as far as like actual gameplay and how it was a fucking riot to play, I loved it. Mm. And so that, yeah, I'm willing to give it a shot. Yeah, so four was great too. I remember four had such great cutscenes and like um, stuff like when you beat it, you could like just go back and watch the cutscenes in a row. Hmm. And I remember like uh, my wife, whenever she caught one, would be like, "Wow, this is so cool." to when I beat the game, I set it up and we watched it like a movie and I would just pause it if it didn't, if something big happened off, you know, out of the cutscene and not just like, like a fight. I'd be like, oh yeah, then I had to fight this thing. <laughs> a, well, now getting, I can experience it all for myself. She was getting like director's commentary. So when I play it, yeah, there's a, there was a lot of cool cutscenes in that. So I'd like fill her in on, in, in between and then go back to it. It was yeah, as far as uh, cutscenes go, that that one was definitely the best for that, and it introduced Nero, who's one of the main characters in the the new the fifth one. one. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, definitely, uh, definitely recommend checking those out. They're so fun. And uh, the only other game I picked up this month was Man Eater. Woot! And I thought I bought that game. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. <laughs> <laughs> And like I had it, I had it in with the eggs and the bread, and then something yeah, happened. Yeah, it was like the only bag I didn't look in, and uh, yeah, the, my bag of bread. So I was like, oh, it's probably just in the in the bag of bread on the counter. And I looked, and I'm like, it's not there. And then I looked at my receipt, and they must have put it aside when, or thought it was like for return. Was it in one of those big plastic cases that they had to take off with a key? No, they don't do that at our, okay. at our Walmart. There's like the glass case. I was going to say she might have placed it aside to say I'll do that later and then she forgot about it. <laughs> Cuz I'd uh I'd looked at it and been like did this just come out cuz it was in the cheap the cheap games like they got a cheap games rack that isn't 
you know, isn't covered. It doesn't have cut plastic case over it. Kind of. it's like the, usually it's like the 30 and under. Well, the game is, is a disc is like a budget game. Yeah. Can, uh, Canadian it's 40 though. So it'd still have to go in the case. Uh, and, I, and I remember looking at it and going, Oh, didn't this just come out? Like, and I'm thinking, oh, if it's in the cheap games already, like maybe it sucks. So it's like I'm not going to grab it right away. I'm going to look into it. And I looked into it. This looks awesome. Grabbed it. And I somehow didn't buy it. <laughs> and then, um, it's one of the X Files. I went back again, like uh, two days later. They'd only gotten two copies of each, Xbox and PS4. They were gone. I was like, Amazon. Damn. So yeah, well. It's actually cheaper in Canada than it is on Amazon. So I was like, damn it. I'll just That's weird. Hopefully they get another copy soon. Yeah, our, our Walmart's been getting awful like that. They'll get like two, like, uh, one or two copies of a game. And, you know, they did the same with Doom Eternal. I got the only, was it one? Yeah, they got one copy of each for uh, Doom Eternal. And I got the only one in, in town or two. One of, I think it was two each. And I was like, what the hell's the point? You're like mm. it's a big area a lot of people like playing video games here like it's not like you know we're like a town of 200 people or something yeah so that was kind of a pain in the ass i'll get it eventually but uh it looks so cool yeah it's a it's a shark rpg yeah and you get to viciously maul people you can even jump on the beach and yep you can flop around like a fish uh, and you, munch people that are having people. bonfires and stuff and then as long as you don't run out of air, you can yeah. jump back into the water. That's yeah, it looks it looks like a lot of fun and I'm bummed I don't have it because I, I might actually jump into that one right away when I get it. Yeah. But I did get a bunch of cool stuff. Do it. Some cool stuff. It's uh, I don't pick up a lot of switch games, but uh when they didn't have what is this that they did? I don't know. Around the same time I got Everspace Stellar Edition, because it looks cool as hell. And you got to too. Woo! This camera is pissing me off. <laughs> you told me, yeah, you told me it's a pretty cool game. So yeah, I got it uh, through limited run for the PS4. I would rather have a PS4 copy, but I'll stick with this. It's fine. I streamed it a little bit on Twitch. It's pretty fun. It's like a rogue, a rogue like Wing Commander game. Yeah, I was just kind of there in the cheap games, and I was like, it's it's different. It's fun. And, uh, and the graphics, at least on the PS4, the graphics are fucking gorgeous. Sweet. Hopefully that transfers over to the really good. Um, yeah, because you know me, I'd rather have it on one of the, like the more powerful consoles. Yeah, I'm not, I don't put too much stock in the portability. Yeah, but it is, cool, it is a cool feature. I feel like I, I didn't. I didn't even realize it came out for the Switch. So when you told me that, I was just kind of like, "What? When did that happen?" <laughs> yeah, I feel like I discount the uh, the portability of the Switch. I think it's more like because everyone else that's like their. The that's what they, they have for it. Yeah. They'll buy it on multiple, um, both because oh, I gotta have it on the go. Like, do you like do you bring a suitcase of games with you everywhere you go? Like, how many games do you need to have? Yeah, on no the go? shit. I've played and, Doom on the go. It's not impressive. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I uh, playing it. And, playing a dock is fine. Playing it on the go, not so much. Yeah, it, it really chugs. That. I remember you talking about that on your stream the other day. Yeah, and also playing it with just the regular Joy Cons. Is garbage. I even when I had it playing it portably, I, I did the kickstand thing and had to use a pro controller because <laughs> I could not play it like that. I, yeah, that one. It, no, it, that's why you buy those Demon X Machina controls because those work a lot better when you're playing yeah. in handheld mode. Yeah, I do. I do have to get those still. They're pretty uh, awesome. I do have the D-pad uh, Hori uh, Joy-Con thing that I got at E3 last year. That's pretty cool. Uh, Is that the Zelda game, one. What's that? Is that the Zelda one. No, it's a Mario one, but it, oh. I didn't get the I didn't get to pick it. They gave uh, GameStop did that giveaway when I did the Human Claw Machine. Oh yes, 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 yes. So that, that was pretty cool. Uh, the next game I grabbed, I've wanted for a while, but I never saw it around here. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll. Gra-. And when I see it out of town, I've, I've already got too big of a stack. <laughs> and that's of course pinball. I want that so bad. <laughs> I thought you already had it. No, I have the Stern pinball collection. That one's fun too. Yeah. That's why yeah. I want to get it for the yeah. Switch so I can have like all the pinball games on the Switch because that's something I would play portably is like the pinball games. Oh yeah, like, that, that's the game I I totally was like, you know what? Definitely, I think yeah. it is on. I think it is only on Switch too, so that's cool. I've got the one, yeah. 
I bought the the Stern pinball because Ghostbusters had to yeah. have it. I, I even said that in the stream the other night. I was just like, Jason probably had this because it's got the Ghostbusters game in it. Yeah, like, it I, bought it, like, I bought it because it had the Star Trek game in it. <laughs> but yeah, the Star- Honestly, like playing it though, I think uh, I think this was the next generation. No, it's the, the no, no, reboot, the reboot the Star Trek one. Reboot, yeah. Uh, JJ Abrams. Yeah. Uh, what what game was it then? There's another game on there that I was like, actually, I like this one a lot more. Is Last Action Hero on it? Last Action Hero's on it. Uh, Last Action Hero. Frankenstein. I, like, I like this one. Starship more. Troopers. Yeah, there's a lot of really good ones on that. Like yeah. really good licensed one. So. And the cool thing uh, is, like the barcade down the street from me actually has the um. Uh, the shit. We're just talking about Star Trek. The Star Trek one. He has the Star Trek one there too, and it's pretty damn accurate because I play that a lot at the arcade compared to the uh, digital one. I'm like, it's just spooky how accurate it is. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't have a. I've played quite a few pinball. I don't have a lot of them, mm-hmm. but I have played a lot of them over the years, and I think that's my favorite pinball game, is the Stern one. So, Star Wars better live up. <laughs> Do it. But um. Also, I got a game. I'm a little late to this one, but I actually found it for a good price. It's a limited run. And you know me, I'm not, I don't order a lot of limited run. I'm not trying to have the full set like you were, but uh, not anymore. Cosmic Star Heroin. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Sci fi RPG. I always seem to find out, like, oh, they just, they just had it up. They just, uh, they were just doing that. That just but came out for the missed, Switch, too. But now you missed out. Uh, actually, I got it for a digitally. Uh, I don't know why, but there was like some crazy sales on the Switch, and I think I picked this up for like a dollar sixty or something. Yeah, the so, Nintendo downloaded it, and he was like singing its praises for the longest time. He's like, "This is a great RPG." Yeah. So, and it's actually uh, a decent length for one of you. It's only like a like an eight hour game or six hour yeah, game. So that's the one I'll keep. I'll keep it. Like, <laughs> it respects my time. Wow, yeah, it's, it's like a it's like a, a dad game time RPG, so that's awesome. <laughs> Speaking of RPGs, got a couple more. Um, Trials of Mana finally showed up. I mean, it showed Woo! up when it released. Can't wait to play this. Uh, I've got the uh, the collection of mana for the Switch that has the original, you know, uh, second and Setsu three on it. Uh, so I. I've played a bit of that, and I, I, I want to kind of, not exactly on the, the level of Musty, but I want to do kind of like a comparative playthrough mm-hmm. with the two of those. So Trials is part four? Uh, no, Trials is part three. Trials of Mana is a remake of uh, Second Setsu 3. Okay. So, it's uh, yeah, it's on the collection of Mana 2 in its original form, the Super Nintendo version. Okay. Oh, this okay, one's okay, like, okay, okay, like okay. a full remake, though, so it's, okay. uh, I gotcha. it's not going to be like Super similar, but you know, kind of like Final Fantasy VII remake style. Mm-hmm. And then I also got Sakura Wars. Woo! Looks absolutely awesome. I have one of those I for saw, the PS2. <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of those games that uh, I saw the trailer, and the trailer just actually sold me the game. Like the trailers v- very seldomly do that anymore. Yeah, I actually have one, one of the box set ones for the PS2. Sweet. Stupidest dumb subtitle ever. So long, my love. Aw, that's so heartbreaking. <laughs> okay. Single tear runs down my cheek. <laughs> yeah. uh, and also, I uh, uh, I found out I was doing something awful by not owning any BlazBlue games. As much as I like the BlazBlue games, I think I have a, I think I have a couple of them uh, digitally, but I didn't have any separate uh, physically. So I grabbed. Blazblue Calamity Trigger. Yeah. And this one surprised me. Blazblue Continuum Shift Extend. Uh, I paid like eight bucks and I got the limited edition of it. Nice. With a, uh, uh, an art book, 17 song soundtrack. Yep. I got that exact cal- same thing for the PS3. Calamity X Continuum Calendar. Yeah. Uh, so right above my head. Things, I have to do one of those things where you look it up, you Google it, and go, "Okay, what? Uh, when can I use the calendar for this year again?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the one for the the PS3, but my my calamity triggers like the special edition 360 one. 
Sweet. Yeah, I did get that one. I just got the regular one. Yeah, yeah, they I were found so it at half price books, real cheap. So I was, I was like, why not? Yeah, these were both so cheap. And I was like, how would I? I, I think it's because I never really run into them in the stores. Yeah. Like GameStop, I never really and found this, them. And it was like right after I found Calamity Trigger, the special edition one over here, I found it for the PSP also at another store. Sweet. And I was like, I'll, I'll play it on the go. I don't give a shit. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it was a this... Calamity Trigger portable, I think it's called. Sweet. I also got. A uh, couple awesome shmups for the PS4. I absolutely love my shmups. And this is Katsui Des- Destiny Kazuna Jikogu Tachi. You know, rolls right off the tongue. But it's a awesome cave your, shooter helicopter your shmup. Japanese is flawless, by the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that, that better not have been sarcasm. I've been practicing. <laughs> It sounded like a native. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Radical Reggie school of pronouncing Japanese. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh. <laughs> uh, it's a, yeah, it's a awesome game. I actually beat this one already. As most of the cave shooters, you know, they only take about an hour. But this one is, unfortunately, very little English in the menus even. Hmm. And uh, for a home port of an arcade game, it uh it gives you like three continues or like two continues I think, so it'll kick your ass and then uh, not give you a chance to make a comeback because you because usually you can I know there's different uh, different modes a lot of cool modes in it uh, absolutely fun uh, the other one I got was Espra de Sai this one's uh, another cave shmup. And it's you're basically like superheroes. Hmm. If you're you're not in a ship or anything, it's just you flying and you're like casting crazy amounts of projectiles and fireballs. And um, yeah, I like this one a lot too. Um, but I think I liked this one more. It's uh, it's got a cool like two two different weapons. You got like your regular kind of spread shot weapon. But you also have like a lock-on weapon, and the lock-on weapon is like amazing. And it doesn't use like a meter, like a power meter. And this one, you don't have bombs. You have like this power blast hmm. um, that you can build up your energy meter for. And both awesome games. Uh, I must have gotten a good deal because uh, I was telling you about them last night, and you said they were like a hundred dollars now. Yeah, I looked them up on both Amazon and eBay, and each one of them is going for around 80 bucks. Balls. Yeah. Balls. That's the crap, man. That's how I'm crap. See, I'll and just I, wait until the COVID thing has run its course, and maybe everything will drop in price. Yeah, I, uh, I also, uh, speaking of Radical Reggie, I watched his newest pickup video he just did. Uh, I think it just came out today. And he also picked up Esprit de Sai, so that's cool. Um, this one uh, at least has more... Uh, English in the menus and stuff, so I can set things how I want. Did you tell um, Reggie to stop copying you? Yeah, stop copies me. I just got that. <laughs> I don't know. He, he could have had it for a while from how much stuff he had in his, his pickup video a good hour long. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on, uh, with that, I uh, I also uh, picked up a game I, I re- recently beat on the Xbox One. But there was no physical copy for the Xbox One, and I picked up pieces of the Luftwaffe Squadron. Luftwaffe! Yeah, so uh, it's another shmup. Um, we talked a little bit about it. You talked about it on your new stream because you got it on the Switch. The Switch! And it's uh, it its biggest uh, detriment is that it looks like a phone game or a flash, like a flash game. game. Yeah. <laughs> thing. Uh, but it's. I found it really interesting, and uh, like I just said about the other like shmups, usually just about any of them you can beat in about an hour, mm-hmm. hour and a half, maybe at the most, without going through it with every character just to feel like you're getting your money's worth. Because for what you're getting, as uh, we also talked about this, uh, for what you're getting from these shmups, the price doesn't match like what the content. Really like they're super fun. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, but they're always like crazy price, like 80 yeah. bucks. Aces of the Luftwaffe for the 
a physical copy. I think it was fourteen dollars, and that game will keep you busy for like ten hours. Yep. Uh, I like the super creative bosses. Uh, you actually command the whole squadron. You're like four planes at once. So in a way, it kind of sucks trying to avoid projectiles. Yeah. But as long as your middle plane doesn't get destroyed, you don't lose a life. The other ones uh, will blow up and they'll come back after like 30 seconds, I think it is. So uh, I guess it's kind of like having a shield on the side. But, yeah, it's uh, like uh, like Galaga. Like yeah. when you get that extra yeah, ship on the side. Yeah, extra you firepower, that. but you, it gives you a bigger hitbox. Exactly. So yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. It kind of reminded me of that in a way. Uh, it's got a skill tree so that you know you can use your points. You pick yeah, up a little, little bit of RPG element. <laughs> yeah, so is that? It's got. It's really uh, cool. There's a side mission in every level you play, and uh, be, it'll be something like bomb this area, take over this, uh, blow this up, kind of some something like that. So it's like a little thing to aim for. Some of sometimes it's just survive mm-hmm. if there's like a ridiculous amount of enemies or something, and. Uh, yeah, it really just had a good variety to it. And some of the uh, bosses were kind of like hair pullingly annoying. But... <laughs> I haven't gotten that far in the game yet. So, but yeah, there's a, <laughs> especially on, on this one, it comes with the DLC included. So it's got two full campaigns. Yeah, mine, my, my, yeah, I think I said two. Five chapters with five levels each. So that's 25. 25 yeah. times two is 50. So, uh, damn. yeah, <laughs> maths is, is fine. So, Give me all uh, that content. So yeah, and I just thought it was funny for like the, for like the longest shmup I think I've ever played. <laughs> fourteen dollars, fourteen dollars, and you know for these ones going for a hundred dollars, um, that's not what I paid. I, I can't even remember what I paid for these. I think I think I paid only like forty five, fifty bucks for them. But uh, I'll, still, it's, it's one of those games I'll I'll revisit. So I'll make sure to revisit for paying fifty bucks. You know, I. Uh, I can't say worth the money for the hundred bucks, but like you know, yeah, I'm not paying hundred like bucks for them. You don't, uh, you don't have much choice. It seems a lot with the shmups, especially with the uh, unless it gets like a maybe a release from somewhere else in North America because these are both imports. So here's hoping we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and uh, the last game I'm going to talk about. Is a game that you've also gotten since our last episode. Oh yes, um, I've been loving this game. It's a online only uh, game where you play as either the predator or one of four fire team members, and you do these little missions. It's made uh, by the same people who did the Friday the Thirteenth game. And if you're a fr- fan of Predator, I'd say don't miss out on this game. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't. I actually bought PS Plus to play this game, and uh, you've been putting it to good use. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've been. I'm level fifty on it already. Actually, fuck you. I. Uh, I'm a huge Predator fan, and also a huge Arnold fan, and super stoked that they actually added Dutch into this game. Yeah. And- it is so cool because it's not just his likeness, but Schwarzenegger is also doing the voice. And it's not just him making a couple Arnold sounds and saying, get to the choppa, which he does do. Yeah. But uh, it also is like kind of fleshing out his story of what he's been up to since the original movie. Uh, there's these tapes you can unlock through leveling up. Uh, that kind of are like debrief mission uh, debrief tapes, mm-hmm. and so I think it's funny because some of them are from like 2025. And I'm like, dude, this guy's still using cassettes. <laughs> <laughs> he's so old that, school. Yeah, it goes from 1987. He's, un- to he's like, living in that analog world. Yeah, so it's more off. It's as part of his off the grid uh, storyline, I guess. <laughs> He's like, I'm not gonna waste my eight pack of Memorex tapes I bought in 1987. I got that high bias. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he was. Uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, I was just happy to be playing as Dutch because that's 
Why not? That's awesome. You got to pay for him though, which kind of sucks. Yeah, he's. Uh, I'm not sure how much he is in the U.S., but he was like nine bucks, I think, or eight fifty Canadian. Um, worth it to me, but uh, yeah, it kind of sucks. He wasn't just part of like a you know. I figured it would just be a DLC. Uh, his like guns, that. I think, are going to be available for everybody, everybody on June 12th, I think. So it's kind of like an early access for his weapons. But he's his own class because there's like a assault class, recon class, you know, just like any any online shooter. Mm-hmm. But Dutch is his own class. So that's pretty amazing. Class and his gun is super awesome because it's the same gun from the movie. It's a machine gun with an underbarrel grenade launcher. Uh, yeah, so anytime we get a chance, at least once a week, we try to jump on and play a few rounds, and I've been loving it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't always do the best, but sometimes we no. do the very best. <laughs> Especially that last time. Yeah, sometimes it's like, what happened? Yeah, but, uh, it's like, what? I took three, that one time I took three steps yeah. after you guys brought me back to life. I took three steps and the predator got me in the back. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it seems like he's a little OP almost, but uh, well, I think it's just like him. they're not putting people in, like they're grouping people like not in the same level. Like they're on that, they're like the people playing the predator are way higher level than we are. Yeah. It feels like it sometimes, yeah. Especially yeah. the and some of the wep- his weapons seem just totally like overpowered. One or two hits. Yeah, yeah, that like, staff of his, that bow staff thing. Yeah, the combi stick. He's yeah, he's deadly. Like two hits of that, you're dead. Before, by the time you realize you're being hit, you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, I'm being you see, you see that blood splay or a cut across your screen, and then you're like, oh, shit, he's behind me. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty deadly, pretty quick. So it's a. Uh, it's, it's kind of bullshit. It uh, but it's not. Elf the Predator the lived up his name. You feel like, you feel like you're in the movie because you're like scared shitless of him. Yeah, <laughs> even if you're, you, know, you start yeah. hearing this, the noises, or you hear the laser, the laser targeting thing happen. Yeah, so and you'll hear everyone in the chat going like, "Oh my god, he's here! Oh my god, he's here!" Yeah, it's not a, <laughs> uh, you know, they didn't totally make him a, a pussy like they did to the aliens in Colonial Marines, where you're just like, Brr, uh, it's dead." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he he's a he's a bullet sponge, but uh, we've got him like a few times. That's why I got the and, minigun. He's also uh, he's also pretty fun to play. It takes a lot of getting used to. Tell me about and, it. Uh, but it's it's a lot of fun. I've wiped out a few teams. I've also been gotten my ass kicked and maybe killed one guy. I but... have not wiped out a few teams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're trying to get a group together to play play all the to, all together with someone, uh, kind of like you guys did with Friday the Thirteenth. So hopefully Just we can get some going. people to buy it. Yeah. Um, yeah, besides that, um, I just got some VR games. We forgot to pick a VR game to talk about this time. Oh my god. What is our problem? How is this so? Uh, so I guess I'll feature this one because I want to check it out. So this is, uh, I'm a big Bill Murray fan. I like Bill Murray. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you do. That's the only other game I have coming right now. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Groundhog Day. I, I always liked that movie. Why should I have ruined it? Cool idea. But did you know? Did you know? I know you no. know. I know. A sequel to Groundhog Day. I didn't Day? know a little while ago, but now I know. I am in the know <laughs> now. <laughs> and there's a, and it's a PSVR game. How I don't know. <laughs> you go back as I guess you're Bill Murray's son. Follow the adventure misadventures of Phil's son, Phil Jr. Creative with the original. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's but, thinking uh, the box. Yeah, you can recognize some of the characters on the back here, like uh that dude, the dude that always like follows him around. And oh Phil <laughs> uh, so, uh, Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's a really interesting thing for VR. I looked on Amazon, they it wasn't on there then. Naturally, I I actually used eBay for the first time in probably about ten years. Yep, that's what I did. <laughs> and uh uh, actually, I got the I got a pretty good price on eBay, on eBay for it, so it made it worth uh, coming out of eBay retirement. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Really, I mean, really cool. If it's done right, it, this could be a really cool game. And also, I found out about the site of the company that makes them, and uh, I pointed them pointed them out to you. He showed me some VR games. You're like, I had no idea there was a Doctor Who VR game. 
stuff like that. Uh, well, I saw that got- on a, a picture. Some guy on a PSVR group I'm in on Facebook was like, I got all these new games recently. And I was like, I didn't know there was a Doctor Who game. I'm like, what? And then you're yeah, like, hey, check out this website. Yeah, when, you, when you showed me, I was just like, oh, yeah, that's totally. I totally just saw those on the website I was looking at last night. Uh, the name escapes me right now. Perp Games. Yeah. Perp Game, like Perpetrator. Perp Games, not Perv Games. Not Purple. It's, it's, it's probably a PerpGames.com, but uh, I'm not going to check it out. VR porn. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, they have a whole bunch of different games, but uh, they have a ton of VR games. And uh, a lot of ones that I've been even, I wasn't even aware of until I, I randomly, I don't even remember what got me to look it up. But yeah, I was looking Brown something else up and I kind of, <laughs> no, I, I was looking in something else up and I saw like a, a thing and I was like, oh clicked on it and i was just about to tell you about that but then you sent me that picture so it all worked out <gasps> and uh Hooray! i'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in a pretty big uh vr order soon but uh me me too most likely they're also <laughs> getting a i'm curious getting, about a doctor who vr game i'm curious what that would be like yeah i don't even watch doctor who or get into it and i don't I'm, either. I'm interested in checking it out so uh i want to say something about how much we love our vr yeah i'm uh, willing to buy something from a franchise i'm not really a big fan of just so i could play it in vr Funny thing is, with how much I like all all types of sci-fi stuff and all that, uh, I'm not into it. But my sister is a big Doctor Who fan, so even if I don't, I'm sure I get some enjoyment out of it anyway. But even if I don't, my sister would probably lose her shit playing it. So <laughs> I'm actually waiting. They're doing. I I saw a thing that said they were doing. Oh, that's why. Said they were doing a physical copy of. Pixel Ripped 1989. And yeah, yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, this might be an old article. And I looked, on, I found their site and I looked at it to see if they, it was on there yet. And I, I never do this on purpose, but I signed up to their newsletter. So they'll send me a message telling me when it's, when, when those are ready. So I will order that up and then I'll put in a fat order of other games. Yeah. That's the plan anyway. And that's, I'll probably go up past the plan. Like, oh, yeah, I'll get these four games. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm at it. They got to, they, you know, they got to go across the pond. I might as well order. Yeah. Might Just might do well it all at once. Just get everything. I'll we'll make it even 10 games. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it for my game pickups. Uh, I got okay. a new system. Ooh. And I didn't show too beat up. You might see a little, uh, did it get them. shipped to you in that box? Like, was yes. that what they shipped it that way? No sticker on it, on it though, like like the other ones. So, uh, not really too beat up. Pretty good. Pretty good. Was that from so Amazon? The little the little crease in the front. Yeah, that's the only place you can get it. Oh. It's Amazon. It's only on. They Amazon. are the worst at shipping stuff. Yeah, I don't know. They'll send you something they could send in just a box in a huge box. It'll be a little thing like this. They'll send mm-hmm. it in a huge box wrapped. In a million bubble wraps, but uh, I'm banking on another game coming out later this year being awesome because I'm all in on stuff for it. And uh, we're talking about Cyberpunk, so I really, really wanted that Xbox One X Cyberpunk bundle, but I was like, I really don't need another Xbox One X, but I really need that Xbox One X, so I bought this. In, hope, in hopes that it'll be enough and I can look the other way when the console comes out as much as I want it. It's or end just... up buying it again for the Series X. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and I also I like my toys. So I also bought V and Johnny Silverhand which is hey, my wait, Keanu. Tur- Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm terrible at framing it. There he is. There's Whoa. my Keanu. And he's got a guitar, so you can do his Wild Stallions guitar thing with an actual Esquire. guitar. Horn. Yeah, and V. <laughs> so, uh, pretty cool figures. He has no they're, neck. They're McFarlane, uh, they're McFarlane Toys figures, so they always put a lot of quality detail into those. Happy about it. Yeah. So I was, just, I was just talking to you about, like, man, what if Cyberpunk sucks? And I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> you're invested time, right now you're invested the first time I've invested in something before it's out and the last time i did that was with star wars episode one so let's no, hope no, it doesn't backfire gloriously like that did but 
Uh, either way, I'll be happy to have a Keanu figure, and I'm sure I'll still use a controller and not be like music thinking. It's a gonna be okay day. <laughs> All right, I promise. This is my last thing. Okay, but it is the best thing. Yay! Ow. Come so, on. Yeah, I've always been a big fan of Predator. That's not a question, <laughs> as you can tell by our plentiful Schwarzenegger first nations every time we uh yeah it's talk. gonna happen it's gonna happen in general <laughs> we talk about anything when schwarzenegger makes it in there but uh this was a bit of a pricey one but it's actually my anniversary gift for my wife oh so she probably just wants arnold to be around the house when i'm not happy anniversary <laughs> <laughs> stick around yeah I, <laughs> when it came in around, around, literally <laughs> Stick around. I got what you this thing. <laughs> Got you this thing. Stick around. So uh yeah, that's that's it. That's it for the awesome. I, I got except for that. That's that's the my favorite stuff so I've got out of the last bit. I didn't have a choice. I had to talk about those two things. Because <laughs> I didn't have much to talk about. Those were cool things. Okay. Devil May Cry rules. Speaking of cool things, what is cool? There was an announcement that came out earlier this week. Huh? about how HBO Max is getting the exclusive rights to the Snyder Cut of Justice League. Yeah. And, it and it's is. started all this talk about all the other DC movies getting, like, director's cuts. Like, they're talking the special edition of uh, Suicide Squad with all the cut Joker and Harley stuff in it now. Uh, I don't know. From what uh, it, could be, it sounds like it's going to be a completely different movie. But like all the excitement but, for the Justice League has like started yeah. all this talk about all these other movies. I'm fine with just Joker, or uh, <laughs> Joker, just uh, just them not doing more of that. That Joker, I yeah, that about. Joker, that the worst. See, that's that's the perfect way to describe him. That, that Joker, Joker, that one. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah, uh, um, I've seen enough of them. Uh, some of the but scenes, I, but honestly, what it sounded some of like they shot Harley were kind of like the back, like the flashback scenes. Mm-hmm. Were probably some of the best scenes in the movie, but as yeah. far as that Joker all together, garbage. From what I understand, they shot so much material of Harley and Joker for that movie that it could have been its own movie. Yeah, they might as well just made the Mad Love movie. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, but because of that, getting all you know, all the geeks, you know, they're getting their blood boiling because everyone's like either out for it or against it. Why yeah. not talk about some of these animated DC movies that no one seems to talk about? Yeah, apparently they got in over their heads because apparently they're already like 30 million invested in <laughs> the Snyder's cut and shit. And actually, I think it. Yeah, they're bringing uh, Cavill back. They got yeah. there. They hired. They rehired him. Yeah, so he's going to be in more future yeah. DC movies. Yeah. So. All of a sudden, it's not bad to be in a DC movie now. Oh, then they're gonna they're gonna do it the right way. Well, then yeah. I want to be part of it. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about these uh, DC animated. Yeah, movies. there's these DC animated films that have been coming out since Jesus, probably like the late '90s. Yeah, I think the first oh. one I remember seeing that was like a directed video one was Batman Sub Zero. Sub Zero and uh, Mask of the Phantasm. Mask of the Phantasm was theatrical. I saw that in the theater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Mask of the Phantasm. Oh yeah, actually now. I remember I saw Mask of the Phantasm in the theater. It was me, my brother, my friend Charlie, and his his then girlfriend. And mm-hmm. when it was over, Charlie, myself, and my brother were all like, "That was the coolest freaking thing ever." And his girlfriend looked at him and she goes, "I don't know what the hell movie you saw. I felt like watching somebody read stereo instructions to me." <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I actually rented that for my birthday party because it came out on what was it Halloween. Uh, yeah, I remember Halloween. it came out in the fall. Yeah, Halloween. Yeah. I think it came out like right before, um, right before my birthday, and I ended up being able to rent it. And that was the, one of the movies because on my birthday, we'd usually, I you know, you'd have a couple friends sleep over and I like, pick a couple movies to watch and stuff. And Mask of the Phantasm was one of my picks that year. So excellent. Yeah, I love it. It's a fantastic, fantastic movie. Yeah. I was happy to find it, find finally find it again because I was looking for it for a while, and then I, we have like a bargain store, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, just like a cheap discount store, mm-hmm. and they randomly had it in with their movies, and it was the two pack Sub Zero, and I was like, all right, 
when I'm not looking for it. Yeah, same going here. To, going to those big, like, huge movie stores with all the music and movies, like uh, Sam Goody kind of used to be, mm-hmm. and uh, can't find it. Looking through, like, a dump bin of $5 movies at a discount store. And, oh, there you go. So, <laughs> happy. Yeah, um, I wasn't even looking for it. I just found it at a half price books. Sweet. I didn't even know it was on Blu-ray. I was just kind of like, oh, whatever. And I saw it sitting up on the animated film shelf, and I said, that is coming home with me. Perfect. Well, the newest DC animated movie is Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. Damn right. Which is the, I would say, they've actually been doing kind of a like a DC cinematic animated universe. Yeah, which I was uh, not aware of at all. And they've been putting them out pretty solidly, like I think three or four a year for about uh, since twenty probably about eight 13? years. Now. Yeah, thirteen I think they said was when the the first one in the series is uh Flashpoint. Yes. Or the Flashpoint Paradox. And that yeah. I think was in around twenty thirteen. Yeah, so they've been uh that's one of the only ones I don't own actually. It's a couple couple I'm missing out on, but I've recently picked up quite a few of them. Yeah, you but, did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> War is essentially Infinity War. Yeah, in the DC universe, it's got but R rated. Yeah, it's it's pretty dark. It's pretty violent. You get to see it's a lot of your favorite uh, DC superheroes getting ripped in half or beheaded. Yeah, so and just geysers of blood, people yeah. getting eaten, <laughs> it's, and uh, lots of uh, lots of curse words. Yeah, so it's definitely more effective. In uh, they're definitely more effective in their animated movies than they are in their live action. Yeah, Marvel Marvel's got it in their live action, kind of mm-hmm. lacking on their animated. Yep, and completely the opposite with DC. So they're all I know is I got a huge smile on my face here in Raven, just kind of casually walk past the camera, going like, "For fuck's sake!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the one I bought was in a little like bo- like a numbered box, and mine actually came with a little Raven. Raven, movie. yeah, she's great on the show or in um, the movie. Yeah, I've actually I've become a a big fan of hers from uh, the stupid of stupidest of reasons. Uh, I watched a bit of the the Teen Titans animated show. We uh, we own the series now. Uh, mm-hmm. I've got most of the good DC animated series, but actually, my kids are super into Teen Titans Go, and she's hilarious on there. Like, uh, I don't know, a lot of DC fans seem to absolutely hate. <laughs> are you all right? Your your little buddy is leaning forward, and now it looks like he's creeping on you. <laughs> he's like. What's up? What's up with that? <laughs> just creep. <laughs> He's just whispering sweet nothings to me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh yeah, Teen Titans Go. Yeah, I'm actually a fan of it, but a lot of DC fans apparently hate it and think it's stupid. I've never seen it, so I, I can't comment. It's probably it's probably a lot to do with that. I have kids, and I've watched I've watched the entire series and the. I actually took them to the movie to see them. I was just going to ask, have you seen the movie? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's got a Stan Lee cameo. So <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Stan Lee does actual Stan Lee does a cameo and the Teen Titans go wow. to the movies. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a little childish kind of toilet humor and stuff like that, but uh, I love it. If you know, I'm not expecting a serious, story watching you can tell just by the animation style that it's obviously not meant to be taken seriously so if you could you know as long as you think about it like that it's a really entertaining kids show it definitely beats like paw patrol or anything else i haven't you seen know, that the kids but, yeah. last animated show i watched I of theirs was uh young justice young justice which was too. awesome <laughs> yeah we've been we've watched through all that on netflix i don't own that one but we own the uh, the Justice League series that went along with like the uh, oh, like Superman, Unlimited, super yeah, yeah, Justice League Unlimited. I got te- the regular Teen Titans box set. I've got uh, yeah, Bruce Batman the animated series and Batman Beyond. I think yeah, it was all Bruce Tim is he knows what he's doing. Yeah, so they yeah they're pretty pretty excellent. And uh, lately, I've just been finding these either cheap at Walmart or. 
a lady was selling a big stack of them. So I got to pick and choose. Nice. So you get you get all these, and then I think I have all of these movies, and I look and I actually don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a while, like when I was looking at them, I I was at work and I was like, I know I have a bunch of those, so I'll I'll get back to you about which ones I got. And I had to like go through all my movie cabinets and be like, all right, what do I got? And only one that I bought did I already have, and it was because I bought a collector's thing of the suicide squad movie when it came out mm -hmm. the live action one that we were just ripping on mm -hmm. because it came with a copy of battle F battle for arkham which is a uh like a batman centric movie but mixed with suicide squad where is it here i don't know i don't have it here apparently oh <laughs> put that thing in. Is. <laughs> Bat yeah, batman <laughs> assault on arkham there you go. So I, well, I have it, you know, it's in its own case now, I guess. But I was like, I swear I had that. No, I don't see it anywhere. And then I had a whole bunch of Batman ones. I was like, oh, no, I've had that. No, I must have just downloaded a bunch of these. So I know I'd seen a lot of them, but it was cool to finally pick up a bunch of them and own them. Um, so I got a Suicide Squad standalone movie, and it came with a graphic novel. That was pretty, pretty cool because cool. a lot of them come in like a box set that Walmart gets. I don't know if they're exclusive to Walmart, but I know uh, Target gets a lot of steel books. And yeah, exclusively. yeah. So I'd rather that. But I, I actually don't... found a couple of the steel book ones at half price books. Like I found a steel book of uh, Justice League versus Teen Titans Sweet. and uh, the first Justice League Dark. I found those at half price, at half price books real cheap. Yeah, those are two that I'm missing, but uh, I, I've kind of committed to collecting them all so when i am I now what i don't have now i am I've now been, too in I've fact i have movies. i have the list of all the movies in order for this you this extended universe sweet uh you got it's justice league flashpoint paradox this is in the order they, they go so justice league flashpoint paradox justice league war batman son of batman uh justice league throne of atlantis batman versus robin batman bad blood justice league versus teen titans justice league dark Teen Titans, The Judas Contract, Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay, The Death of Superman, Reign of the Supermen, Constantine, City of Demons, Batman Hush, and Wonder Woman Bloodlines, and it ends with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. Yeah, the Wonder Woman Bloodlines actually just came out a couple of weeks ago. They don't I didn't even, even know Wonder these Wars. existed. I didn't even know there was a Constantine standalone movie. This one's like still on the new release cube at Walmart. That's how, yeah. how new it is. Like it, They usually come out a couple months apart from each other, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one, I got yeah, I had to make a I had to make a choice because I was at Target this just this week, and I what's when I picked up Apocalypse War, and I was like, do I pick this up or do I pick up Superman Red Sun? <laughs> so I was like, ah, I think I'll go for the Justice League one. <laughs> Red Sun was actually really cool. Yeah, I want to see it. I'll eventually. It's, uh, get it. it's basically about uh, like if Superman was yeah, he crashed when he, in Russia when he, when he crashed. If he crashed in Russia, so he's almost kind of a bad guy. Mm -hmm. It's really really cool. Uh, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd say definitely go back and get it now. Oh wait, I'll, go, I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna pay. I'm not gonna pay thirty bucks for it. I'll probably try to cop, find a copy of it on uh, eBay or Amazon or something. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, sometimes they they're pretty pricey, and that's why I don't have some of them because I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna pay thirty bucks for it. I'll wait till. It's, well, I was willing to do it for this because I was just kind of like, I have to see this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's one of the ones I've uh, I've bit the bullet on. This is another one here. Batman. I still need to see that. Charles. I've got God most damn. of the Bat Batman centric ones. I'm only missing a couple of those, but uh let's get yeah, in your shit again. <laughs> <laughs> the hell out of here. <laughs> he's like like he's in he's in Greece. He's like, tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> the team. Yeah, like I got some of Batman under the red hood. Yep, I've seen that one. That one's good. Batman versus Robin. Haven't seen that. Uh, Batman Ninja. Some of the nah. other ones I have. I didn't like that one, but this one, I was basically digging to get to this one. This one's a really good one, and I recommend if you do not have it. Yep. Yep. Batman Hush. Yep. That's one of the few. That's one of the other new one I got. It's yeah. It's it's excellent. I love it. Uh, this one I was probably the most excited for as far as Batman ones go, and. 
I was most disappointed. And yeah, so was I. I saw that in the theater and I was mad. Well, because, you know, the graphic novel isn't a very long story. No. So they wanted to make this, like, movie length. And all the stuff they added basically took away from the original story. The stuff from the actual graphic novel was awesome, I thought. Really? I'm the opposite. <laughs> Were the gra- from the graphic novel? I've never read the novel, the graphic novel, so oh. I went in there clean slate, and I didn't like any of the Joker stuff. I just liked the stuff with Batgirl. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I, as far as like going from the from the uh, graphic novel to watching the movie, it just seemed like filler at the beginning. Like, but you know, because it seemed like it was. It was almost like it was two episodes. Well, they needed to make you feel for Batgirl before they cripple her. Yeah, which yeah. is which is why they did that. I mean, they were like, "Well, you have to like, you're not co- you're coming off reading the, all these comic books in a row to get to that point." When yeah. you're watching the movie, you don't have that, so they needed to give you a reason to care about what happens to Batgirl instead of it just starting off with him shooting her at her front door. Yeah, makes sense. So. But the thing was, I didn't read the comic book in advance. I'd never read any of it. So I was just kind of like, it was. it's mostly because of the audience I saw it with. And it was like all these fanboys who are sitting there going like, oh my God, Mark Hamill's doing the Joker again. This is going to be the best thing ever. And then when the movie ended, I was just kind of like, that's uh, what you're all excited about? It was really nothing going on in this movie. <laughs> people fanboying often, often ruin things that are actually really cool. Uh, so yeah, I, I could totally get that. Like As much as I fanboy, I, I try to fanboy silently, especially with someone who's not as huge into it or something. Yeah. So it's just like the, the hype for it was so high. Everyone was just like, this is the best story ever. And then both me and my friend that saw it in the theater when it was over, we're like, that's it. <laughs> I didn't even realize they put that in the theater though. Yeah. It was like a one night only thing that they did. Oh, it was like a uh, fathom events does like these one night only things. And they, it was sold out when we went, I was lucky. I got my tickets earlier. Well, I'm, I'm, I miss out on cool stuff. Cause I live in a small shitty area, I guess. <laughs> You know, I'm not a huge Superman fan, but there's also Reds Unbound. Mm-hmm. I like Green Lantern, though. I love Green Lantern. So I got Emerald, Emerald Knights. Knights. This one's pretty cool. Uh, this one is kind of special in a way that it's not even related to the movie, but I was watching this. First Flight's better than the Green Lantern movie that we got. Yeah. It's basically the same storyline. It's like the origin of Hal Jordan, but done well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually watching this when my wife told me she was pregnant with our first child. Oh. So I don't remember anything that happened in that. So I don't remember if it's good. It's good. I was just it's really good. Like, <laughs> we want me and my friends went and saw the the live action movie, and then when the movie was over, we went back to my house, and I was like, "Now I'm going to show you the good one." <laughs> Yeah. And we watched it, and they all at the same time were like, that movie managed to do everything and more that the live action movie did in half the time. Right? Yeah. It was. Not even Ryan and Reynolds could say in that movie. <laughs> he was wrong for the part anyway, because Hal Jordan's not the jokey guy. Yeah. He's, he's he, he would have been a better Kyle Rayner. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, there's also like a couple of the Justice Leagues, like Justice yep. League War, uh, Justice League The Fatal Five. And Justice League Gods and Monsters. This one's pretty cool. I kind of like it. Um, yeah, I also, oh, yeah. Throwing it out of Atlantis. I almost forgot about that Yeah, I got to see that. Uh, they're, they're, they're all pretty good. They, there's only a couple of them where I find them just kind of, meh. Yeah, I didn't like I didn't like Batman Year One. Um, I didn't like Batman Ninja, and I didn't like Killing Joke. Yeah, nin- Ninja's very weird. It's yeah. very, very weird. It just it was just the whole time I'm sitting there going like It's like it's like someone drew like a, a Japanese fan fiction. Batman like fan, fan art. Fiction. Yeah, it's like fan fiction. Like, Let's run with this. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. Very kind yeah, of just, weak story. I, I was watching it with an expression on my face that looked like I was constipated and I was trying to hold it back. So Yeah, I was just I was just kinda like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, a couple I got only on DVD, but there's Crisis on Infinite Earths or Crisis on Two Earths. Sorry, Infinite would be too many to watch, I guess. And <laughs> this one I liked. I wish I'd grabbed it on Blu-ray, but it was cheap. Gotham by Yes, I still need to watch that one. That's a it's steampunk kind of, one, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a it was a pretty cool idea. But this one I, I could take it or leave it. This is also a pretty recent one. Batman, Batman and Harley Quinn. Oh, is that the one with Bernadette from uh, Big Bang Theory playing Harley? 
I think so. Yeah. It sounds like her anyway. Um, this one I really like, but I couldn't find a Blu-ray that had the two parts together. But it's The Dark Knight Returns. That is my favorite of all of these movies that they've made. Yeah, I love it a lot. Um, that is the it's best. part one and two put together. So. Yes, I got that on the blue. The blue that's, blue. that's the one. Every time I tell someone, you want to watch like the definitive Batman film, this is the one to watch. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the graphic novels as well. Yeah. As well. So it was, a, it, was a, it was very stoked when it came out. That and Hush are probably yeah, my fan very fan. favorite Batman ones. Even though they changed um, the ending of the comic book, but I don't care. It's still pretty good, pretty awesome. But I mean, I... I I'm gonna, I mean, I know it's like an animated, so you'd think it'd be exactly, but I I don't mind when they change it a little bit, so you're yeah. still surprised. This one isn't from the cinematic universe, but I got to give it a special shout out. Yeah, the last. There's two Adam of those, West. aren't there? Yeah, but this is the last time Adam West ever played Batman, and yeah. it only came out like a couple months before he he died. And yeah, were, Shatter, I remember they were praising the fact that they were able to like do that. One well, and William Shatner plays Two Face. Yeah, so there's that. <laughs> so yeah, but, pretty cool. But there's, but, there's so many more. There's yeah. so many more. So yeah, was, that's the thing with me was like I thought I had a whole bunch of them, but I really didn't when I finally broke it down. I thought I had way more than I did because all I really have is like the Dark Knight, Hush, the two Justice League Darks. Yeah, I, uh, Teen Justice League Teen Titans. I got the Wonder Woman. Which yeah. is really good. This is my favorite Justice League one, Justice League: The New Frontier. Yeah, that was a good one too. That was I, awesome. I really got a, yeah, I really got to buckle down and pick a bunch of those up. So this is probably my favorite. Out, if you come across any of the any any of them that you already have, shout out to your boy. Doom is fantastic. Doom, yeah, I have Doom. Actually. That is, I watched this on Netflix. I didn't buy it. I watched it on Netflix, and I liked it so much. I invited my girlfriend over just so she could watch it with me again. The funny thing is, I got the collector's edition of Injustice, and it comes with a DVD copy of Doom. Doom but is fantastic. Dick move on their part because it comes in a paper sleeve. That's dumb. Dumb. But Green Lantern. But Injustice and awesome. All Star Superman, which I knew nothing about, and it's actually pretty fantastic. Yeah, for the most part, I think I've seen all of them. But that's what Colin. made me believe I owned all of them. Hey, because I down when you could download stuff a lot more easily, I had to, would just download all of them. Yeah. So I would just I'd usually just watch them when they'd be on Netflix, but they're not really doing that that much anymore. Yeah, they took a bunch of them off. Yeah, they're on the DC uh yeah. streaming service now, which I'm not going to pay for. No. But um uh, speaking of DC while we're at it, uh, I picked up the newest. DC movie, Birds of I Prey. I didn't get a copy of that. They didn't have any 4K copies of it when I went to uh, the Target the other day. Just tape two regular Blu-rays together. It's the same thing. Okay. <laughs> it just doubles the power. Yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> as much as I hated the Suicide Squad, I didn't absolutely hate it, but a lot of it... I there's some, bad, there's some bad stuff. This, there's some this bad one stuff. I liked a lot more. Why introduce Slipknot if you're just going to kill him when he first shows up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt so bad for that actor because I haven't seen him in a movie in like decades. And then like, hey guys, I'm here. Boom, I'm dead. This is symbolized my career. They even put him on Conan O'Brien when they had like the the Comic Con episodes, yeah. and they sitting on the stage, and he's all smiles like, yeah, I'm in this movie, and everyone's like, yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, really? You might as well. You know he's gonna die because they don't give him that little confidential thing at the front at the beginning of the movie like they did with every other character. He was the only yeah. one that didn't get one. You yeah. know he's dead. Yeah, he was the Suicide Squad red shirt. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, that was a bummer. But, hey, go uh, over there and sniff those flowers. <laughs> yeah, they as much as I didn't think I was gonna like this, but I I did this. Uh, I did a two movies in one night thing, a date night with my wife, where we went to this other movie first and dropped the kids off after watching it and went back and watched this. And that movie is Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, my Bring kids were so hyped on this movie, so excited, loved it so much when we saw it, that when it came out digitally, they could not wait. They incessantly bugged my wife and I to get this 
It's like, can you please wait two weeks so we can get the Blu-ray? Yeah, and I was like, I'm still, I'm, I was just like, if we get it digitally, I'm not buying it physically. Oh, Meanwhile, okay. in my head, I was just like, yeah, 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 yeah you are. If not, I'd have been, I'd been going like, you need it, Jason. Yeah, you, you know, you need it. it. Yeah, and this one comes, this one comes with a comic book. Ooh. And I heard there's like a mini movie. There's like little deleted scenes. I haven't even opened it yet because we own it digitally. But <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked on it. I'm not even letting the kids know that it comes with the comic book. Yeah, don't, don't. It'll be wrecked immediately. Yeah, it'll be um, toast. Yeah, I was actually pleasantly. I was expecting to at least enjoy watching it once, but I've watched it a couple of times with the kids now. I need to watch and it again. It's so good. So good, I like it. I'm a big Jim Carrey fan. A lot of people, actually, their complaint seems to be like Jim Carrey wasn't a good Robotnik. But I, uh, as far as what they're doing with the movie, I kind of see what they're doing, and I think in the next one he'll be more. Yeah, he'll be more. He's gonna eat all the mushrooms. Yeah, he'll be. Uh, yeah, he'll be. Please he'll tell be me the they're right, gonna put him in a uh, a fat suit like thing. that girl in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The <laughs> Of the clumps again. No, like the girl that eats that turns into the blueberry. He needs to be walking oh, around in like a blueberry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so much with tiny, with tiny little legs and tiny little arms. <laughs> I'll get you. Not if I run. Yeah. Probably yeah. Not. I'll waddle after you. <laughs> you. Just roll me after you. <laughs> but uh, also, while we're on topic of WB animated oh. things, oh. I think I know where you, you think I know. You know where I'm going with this. Mortal Kombat! I yeah. finally got my copy! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. I was I was really thinking we I wouldn't have it in time it. for us to be able to watch. Yeah, I said episode. fuck it. <laughs> so I uh, had ordered a copy of this at the beginning of Mar of May. Pretty much right when I showed you that I got it. You're like, shit, yeah. ow! Uh, fuck, it's out. I gotta get it. So I ordered this for a 4K copy off of uh, Amazon from a seller. And it like got lost in the mail. And it's it had been almost a month since I ordered it. And I just was at Target this past week when I picked up uh, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. And I was just like, you know what? They have one copy left of this. It's coming home with me. Like if that other one shows up, I'm either sending it back or I'm getting a refund. Or I'll just take it back to the Target and get a refund at Target. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I was like. Yeah, let's go to Target and buy it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I, we were on the same wavelength. I picked up on your vibes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, my vibe is always even if even if I can't answer right away, you know what I'm going to say anyway. You here. treat yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my mine uh, a lot like the DC animated things. There was a little collector box thing, and mine came up a little Ooh. scorpion figure. We didn't get that over here. That's cool. We did not. It smells like maple syrup. I'm sure <laughs> it's because it's Canadian. Always <laughs> like maple syrup. It smells like it smells like Tim Hortons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what did you what did you think of Mortal Kombat? I liked it. I just I wished it had, didn't have anything to do with the tr the uh, tournament. Yeah. When you when you're titling the movie Scorpion's Revenge, I was expecting it to be all about Scorpion. Yeah, he got and more it, of his revenge at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and it just at the beginning and at the very end, yeah. And that's about it. And I was just, I was, that was what really disappointed me because when the whole tournament thing started, I was kind of like, does this really need to be in here? Yeah. I was, I was hoping that the way this was going to be was they're just going to release a whole series of films just focused on a specific character and their story, like their backstories and stuff. Oh, I was weird. Yeah, basically, that. they just retold the movie, the original movie, just focused a little bit on Scorpion a little bit more than most. Yeah, this was definitely better than the other uh, solo Mortal Kombat story. It was oh. better than Sub Zero mythologies. I like. I don't mind <laughs> mythologies, but no, I'm talking special forces. Special forces. <laughs> Please no. Oh, uh, so what'd you what'd you think about the animation style? I liked it. I liked the fact that it was super gory and violent, like it should be. But I was really sick of seeing people getting torn in half and beheaded by the end of it. <laughs> I. Uh... I but there was times better. where it looked like a Peter Chunk animation. Like it looked a little bit like um, yeah. uh, Aeon Flux. It's a couple like of it times stories, right? Like there would be some times where it was super detailed. Yeah, and then, and then there was some other scenes where you're like, "Did they 
animate this five minutes before they had to go to print? Because like, yeah. sometimes it was just like, like, I guess it really just depends on which animation team was working on it or whatever. You could tell yeah, some were more had probably had more time than others. Because some yeah, some scenes were just beautiful, and then sometimes it was just like it just mm-hmm. looked lazy. So uh, it took me out of it a little bit, and I'm usually not someone who like nitpicks stuff like that. But I was just like, it draws attention to itself. That's stand yeah, it's stand out stand outishly yeah. like bad looking. It was just like. But aside from that, from from what I can tell, their idea, what they're going to be doing with these movies now is each movie is going to deal with the main storyline of the next game in the series, but focusing on a character. Cool. So the next move, they set up the whole thing with Shao Kahn saying, fuck that. They might have won the tournament. We're going to have our own tournament from Mortal Kombat 2. And... I'm sure it's going to focus on one of the other characters for that one. And then the next one will be based on Mortal Kombat 3, the game, and then 4 and 5. Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, yeah, I'm I'm, in, I'm definitely excited to see more because this, yeah. this was definitely a good start as much mm-hmm. as there's a couple couple small nitpicks, but overall it was a pretty good start. Like, yeah, the tournament, thankfully it didn't go through like the whole story of the tournament, but it just... Yeah. It was just kind of like, yeah, but like, at the moment, it was it was just covering the same ground as the movie. Yeah, exactly. That's what I felt like. Yeah, it felt like the first movie when they're all like on, especially when they're on the boat, and then when they first get there, <laughs> and also like Sh- or, uh, Kano and Sonya. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there was some good scenes. The fighting was cool. The, I wish there was the, more at the age at the beginning was probably my favorite part. The but, fights uh, are the fights are so short though. That's my issue. Like when yeah, you watch the yeah. live action movie, the fights were like you know almost five minutes long. Yeah, exactly. there was like five hits and the fight's over. I uh, it reminded me of the animated movie version of when two superheroes fight each other. You know, on a comic book, it'll be like Superman fights. You know, some you know the Green Lantern. You're like, why would they fight? But then <laughs> then they realize they're on the same side after like a whole page. You know, like well. <laughs> They'll, they'll get like one shot in on each other each, or you know, yeah. Superman versus Spider Man. Yeah, just I just wish that they they the whole point of the games is the fighting, and yeah. the fighting was probably the weakest thing in the movie. <laughs> At least it wasn't really like dialogue heavy. It wasn't just a lot of standing around talking. Yeah, yeah, because that would have been awful. But it was yeah, just trying to develop that plot. It kept it kept the uh, it kept the ball rolling pretty good. So, I, but, I thought... the, but the Scorpion origin story at the beginning is pretty rad. Yeah. Definitely that was that was awesome. That was way better than I saw than the version that was in the Mortal Kombat Legacy. Yeah, uh, it definitely the, started the strong. online miniseries. Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it definitely started strong. I think the beginning might have been my favorite part. Yeah, him um, him fighting through hell and all that was just awesome. Yeah, it was. <laughs> cool. uh, yeah, hopefully they come out with a new, another one soon. Hopefully, you know, it, it sounds like it's pretty Mortal popular. Kombat so the universe, yeah, animated. So, <laughs> so but I thought they would have released this closer to when the, the, the live action reboot is happening. That's my thing. Hell yeah. I was surprised they released this so soon when well, that's not coming out till next summer. Oh yeah, well they got hype hype for that. Yeah. Maybe you know they were kind of gauging to see how big the audience might be when that comes out. No, oh, it's gonna, gonna be, like it's gonna be like huge to t- tie you over, you know, and maybe they released it earlier because of the whole COVID thing, because the new people will be home to watch movies. Yeah. Or the pop, maybe. Well, it did coincide with the aftermath. Oh yeah. So it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Is not Mortal <laughs> Kombat 11, well, the complete collection. Yeah, me too. It's I'm like, I want to play it so bad, but I'm not paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just wait. Just I'll just wait. <laughs> there's actual like terrible things people are having to endure in life, and there's me going, I don't know Mortal Kombat 11 yet. Uh, it hurts. It yeah, hurts so bad. You have no idea what it's like. The pain. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think that's all. All the movies I got to talk about. You got any other? Oh well, I was gonna do my 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 four K highlight for the month or for the yeah. episode, and uh, I tried to see this in the theater multiple times, and it just never seemed to happen. It had a limited theatrical run. And uh, my thing is, the director of this movie, one of his previous films is the movie that made me want to be a filmmaker, so I like I had to have it. So if you watched my my stream on Thursday when I did the, um, the switch and I was talking about how I'm going to do these movie streams and how I can talk about every movie in my collection because I never buy movies sight unseen. 
Yeah. This is one of the only movies I've ever done that for because I didn't care if I hadn't seen it. I had to buy this guy's newest movie because he hasn't made a movie in almost 20 years. Uh, and that's uh, Color Out of Space. Oh, I have not heard of that at all. Okay, so the guy who directed this is Richard Stanley. He did Hardware, which is the movie that I saw back in the day that made me want to be a filmmaker. Um, he also was the guy who originally was directing Island of Dr. Moreau with Val Kilmer and got famously fired by Val Kilmer. <laughs> um, he, Val Kilmer had him fired because he didn't like the way he was treating his character. And Kilmer used his clout to get the director, uh, Richard Stanley, fired. Back and then they brought in heard what Val Kilmer had to say. No, uh, <laughs> but because of him getting fired, and they brought in John Frankenheimer to direct the movie instead. Marlon Brando flipped because Marlon Brando loved working with Richard Stanley. Richard Marlon Brando came on board because of Richard Stanley. So when they oh. fired him, that's why all that crazy Marlon Brando stuff is in that movie. Oh, okay. That's, it's him rebelling against them firing Richard Stanley. Like him saying, I want to wear a moo. I want to have white makeup on me. I want to have an ice ba an ice pail on my head. It's just him rebelling. So because of that movie, Richard Stanley had a nervous breakdown, went and lived in the jungle for a few months uh, and gave up filmmaking completely until this. <laughs> so he hasn't directed a movie since 96. Yikes. That's a hell of a hiatus. Yeah. He was completely done with the whole Hollywood system. He said stars are, are fucking idiots because of Val Kilmer doing what he did. And uh, I watched the documentary on this and he said working with Nicolas Cage has re um, affirmed like Hollywood stars to him. Like now he thinks that they're okay because Nicholas Cage said was one of the most collaborative, nicest guys he's ever met. Well, and now he wants to make more movies. So this is a, an HP Lovecraft short story that got made into a feature. Oh, cool. Um, and it's about a meteorite that crashes in Nicholas Cage's backyard in the middle. I think he lives in Connecticut somewhere by a lake. Uh, they're real isolated. This meteorite crashes and it's giving out this radiation that looks like magenta light, and everything it touches starts to like mutate, Ooh, and so it turns into like a body horror type film, like a body type horror film. Sweet. And it's it's interesting. It's very trippy. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's H.P. Lovecraft, so it's all about you know he was on heroin while he was writing all this stuff anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so does it really matter? No. That's good storytelling. <laughs> but there's a classic Nicolas Cage moment. Everyone waits for that Nicolas Cage moment where he has to freak out and start screaming. And, and there's a scene in a car where he starts screaming obscenities and punching things that shouldn't be punched. <laughs> Everyone wants to see Cage on Cage. That's why we watch yeah, these movies. There's that. There is a scene in here where it happens a lot. And it happens, but it's it's really dark and gross and unsettling and those are all things i look for in a movie yeah it doesn't really have a plot you know but it's not really supposed to because just a bunch of people like unraveling sweet but it's it's pretty awesome visually it's probably one of the most striking movies i've seen in a long time it's it's amazing what this guy did with like no budget so because of the success of this richard stanley is now talking about doing like a trilogy of hp lovecraft adaptations and this is the first next he wants to do uh shadow over Innsmouth or something oh no the dunwich horror sweet so we'll see maybe he'll get nicholas cage in each one of those that'd be pretty rad because he said he loved working with him so and check out hardware if you haven't seen hardware yet it's a fantastic sci-fi horror movie cyberpunk sci-fi horror movie get at it do it now I got a new movie that uh, I was I was hoping to watch and uh, report on, but I haven't gotten to watch it yet. So I said I'd let you know. I guess maybe uh, next time I'll have a movie to talk about. Oh, uh, I guess I've been watching too much animated stuff. I haven't got to watch. Uh, <laughs> I did only buy it two days ago, the and DC I've been working. Hype train. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. Yeah, well, why don't we move into the highlight? The backlog roulette. Oh. Should we do it? Or what you've been playing? What you've been playing? Should we do playing first? All right. Yeah, let's do what you've been playing. Yeah, save, save the roulette for the end. Let everyone anticipate. Let's just build it. All right. All right. I already, I already talked about two, two of the things I've been playing with Predator. Okay, yeah. Aces, been, Aces of the Luftwaffe. I've obviously been playing the Predator also. Yes. I, st I really hope we get a team together to play that. I really do, too. I've been talking to Captain Algebra. I, I 
I suggested it very lightly to Radical Reggie, and he said he's interested. He just was waiting for like a discount because he doesn't think it's Friday the 13th caliber quite yet. Uh, I was hoping that when the Dutch add-on came out last week that uh, it would convince a lot of people, but apparently it hasn't. Tom, come on. Do now, come on. <laughs> but Cap, Cap says he's interested. He's just waiting for a discount. He also just had bought a shitload of games, so he didn't want to spend any more money. What Reggie said he'll do it cheap. eventually. My one of my friends, my friend Justin, says he'll probably buy a copy of it because he said me talking about, excuse me, me talking about it was interesting him. So yeah, well you know I bought two copies of it so that my brother could play with me because my yep. brother doesn't own a PS4. Uh, I let him play it before I even played it one day when he was over helping me build my shed, and he's like, "Damn, bud, you're making me uh, want a PS4 when the new systems are coming out in a few months." I was like, "Yeah." Oh. <laughs> Let's figure something out. And then he left that day, and I was like, well, I do have an extra PS4. And there is more copies at Walmart. Hmm. Uh, so I just bought it and dropped it off at his house. And uh, no, I told him to drop by my house pick it up. It's like, eh. And he, he's further along than you are, isn't he? Uh, uh, depending on how much he's been playing, I think I'm about... You're about even? I'm still way even. behind. I'm still like in the, the late... I think I'm in the late 20s. I... What I like about it is that you can hop hop on for ten minutes and play around. Yeah, it's not like a Friday Thirteen takes a while. Minute, it's not like a forty five minute round game. Like you can get right through it. And, you know, it could be it could be uh, a lot quicker if uh, your team sucks and you all get slaughtered in like a minute into the round because the predator is on your ass. But other times you can get right through the mission because you have a you know you have a side mission to. It's not just like walk around in the bush and hopefully predator doesn't kill. Yeah, you usually have like what four four sub missions to do before you can get extracted. Yeah, so you're all over the place. You know, there's a yeah. couple big areas. There's a lot of fun. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's 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 very entertaining, and I'm not an online game type of person, but because of Friday the Thirteenth and the connection with Friday the Thirteenth, that's why I wanted it. But then again, I didn't realize when I had ordered this that that's the type of game it was. Yeah. I remember it was like it was like a week before the game came out, and I think you might have said something like, you know, you know, it's online only, right? I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I remember. I remember. Uh, I thought I'd talk to you right when they announced it. But, well, you uh, did. You were like, oh, you saw there's a Predator game coming out, and I said, what? And I went and pre-ordered it. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah, you're like, I had no. That was what it was. I had no damn idea. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was. Yeah. And I didn't. I had no idea. I just figured it was going to be like a 3D Predator game. I'm like, oh, cool. We got a new Predator game coming out. And then like a week before it came out, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm loving it as much as I would love like another concrete jungle type Predator game. Yeah. Uh, it would be. It would be really cool to to revisit that. Yes, I still need to get that one. What else you been Well, the, we this, this we shows how that. long it's been since the last episode. Because I was talking about playing this wow. in the last episode. And then I think two days after that episode filmed, I beat Doom Eternal. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> Best yeah, final yeah, boss battle cool. ever. Yeah. So fun. That two-part uh, final boss battle is so awesome. Yeah, the, the last couple levels are really absolutely... I'd never even say the word epic, but they were pretty fucking epic but i was complaining last time about how i'd find myself in a situation where i just couldn't seem to f get out of like one of those arena battles that you'd be in where all the bot the enemies just keep coming at you yeah. and you're like kill the revenant yeah and i'm like what you're like kill the revenant the guy that has the firewall in front of him kill him the firewall guy that summons i was like guys, huh? keep going. yeah because i didn't read the dossier on the character when he got introduced so i would have known that he summons other characters, and that's why I was getting annihilated because I would kill all these people and he just keep bringing more of them in. Yeah, so the great. moment I did that, and I was like, "Oh look, there's the revenant!" Boom! Oh look, the red level's over. Shit! Why did I think of this? Or I would have been suffering. I would have not. I would not had all those migraines well, because I'm of that. I'm glad you didn't just rage quit. I almost did a couple times. I mean, like there was. It took me three days to beat that level that I was that I was stuck on. I'm there. I'm there for. I'm there for emotional support. Yeah. I, I, but then I, once you were like, "Kill the revenant," I was like, "Oh look! Oh, why didn't I know this earlier?" Because Chris is a freaking ass. Chris is a, Chris is an idiot. That's why. I'm pretty sure what you said <laughs> exactly was God. No, I, I pretty much said you're a dumbass <laughs> to myself. <laughs> like, you're a freaking dumbass. It's like it's like when you play like the the customizable card games. Read the fucking card <laughs> before you play it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, no, but I also. Uh, no. 
Doom's not about reading though. It's about getting no. Reaction. That's why I just kill everything. But man, once I once I started figuring out, like, going back and reading all the dates and stuff, I'm like, oh, there's patterns that they're telling you about and things that these people do. Oh, yeah, I'm I might and, have to play through it again. The last couple of levels of that game were kind of a breeze after that. <laughs> Because I had, because before that, I had seen some shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to go through that again myself. I think we talked about it last time when I got my collector's edition, but I've already beaten it on Xbox One. But I got the PS4 collector's edition that comes you know, with those, the season pass. You know, those trophies. The, yeah, well, the season pass comes with the more story content. Ah, uh, but I'm like, I don't know if I have to beat the game to get be able to play the story content, but. I'm going to want to anyway to be able to, you know, progress. You know, I probably need some of the weapons from the main game. So, yeah. That's not I still a bad think thing. it's better. It's not a bad thing to have to play through Doom Eternal again. I'm not no. gonna I still it. think it's better than the 2016. Yeah. I, it was an improvement in every way, especially the level design. It is so, it's so huge. Well, so well, so creative. Like, yeah. I found uh, 2016, there was like four different types of areas three or four different types of areas and you're just like i'm not knocking that game in any way it just no this one just ramps up the creativity uh the platform took a bit of getting used to like we talked once about once you that. get used to it you know it's going on you're you're it's fine yeah so yeah i'm i'm looking forward to those levels coming out so i just have to buckle down and beat the shit out of it i might even just run through it on easy or something just to get through it again quickly but i loved it anything but, else uh, yeah, right before I, I decided to start playing the Kingdom Hearts, I decided to play through Resident Evil 3 Remake and beat it pretty quickly. Yeah. I never played the original version. Well, I did. I played it briefly, but not enough to get any kind of a nostalgic feeling for it. So playing mm -hmm. through this was pretty much new to me. It's been such a long time since I played through that. I played through... I'm pretty sure I never actually beat the original, mm -hmm. but I played quite a lot of it. And I had two and three were the ones I beat originally. So um, it helped. It, it probably helped my disappointment more playing the original, like remembering the original, because I realized the things that were cut out. Mm -hmm. But uh, it wasn't awful. But it it really feels like it's made to be speed one of those games, of those yeah. games that's a speed run game and it's made to be played through like four times yeah but when you got backlogs like we got that kind of actually seems annoying yeah because <laughs> when i beat it when i beat it it was like you've unlocked all these things for your next playthrough i was like huh that all looks cool but yeah i'm not doing that i just no like i don't it. have time for that ain't nobody got yeah, time for that it was fun but not as fun even gameplay wise i found it just wasn't as fun as two uh, I yeah I, I didn't like that the nemesis was yeah, Super, all scripted. It wasn't any like, surprise, like Mr. X. Like I really, that and you made, could tell that every resume. time he's going to show up. You could tell it like the moment you walk into an area that oh, he's going to show up here because there's like nothing in the area. Yeah, so it was. It took a lot of the suspense out of it. You know, there was yeah. always that suspense of like you could walk into a room and Mr. X is right there by the door, and you're like, oh, yeah. shit. like you open the door, he's just there. You know, like that kind of yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this took it took the horror element out of it for me, and that's yeah. what really kind of. I like about the Resident Evil games is the survival mm -hmm. horror part. I just felt more like more of a survival. Yeah. But <laughs> since I'd never played through the original, I guess I got more out of it than like anyone who had played the original to any extent. So I mean I mean I, I was I was thankful it was kind of short. You know, it didn't yeah. really overstay its welcome. That's true. Um I would have liked to have the way Resident Evil 2 was set up with the two different characters and the two different playthroughs and all that. It felt like I got kind of got gypped from material because I thought there could have been like a whole it Jill, a Jill playthrough and a Carlos playthrough. Yeah. yeah but it, it that didn't, didn't happen. happen. But you do play as each character a little bit during the game. You know, he plays Carlos a little bit. Yeah. Um, it was fun to play as I thought. Yeah. And the boss battles are fun. The boss battles with the Nemesis are fun. I mean, that one where he's like running around that town square Yeah, was pretty fun. And the final one where you have that rail gun was pretty fun. Oh, putting it right in his mouth. That was cool. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah. like... It was short. It was sweet. It, it it felt more to me like a side story of Resident Evil, like it shouldn't have been a numbered sequel. Yeah, I uh, I felt like the actual gameplay wasn't as fun. Like like you, there was methods to staggering the zombies and stuff in the last one, and the pistols just seemed useless. 
yeah. would have rather had a punch button because <laughs> it was like a yeah i carried around the pistol with me the whole time and i never used it i should have just stopped using it i well i should just dropped it in the box in uh in two i you could like kneecap the zombies and they'd stumble and you could get around them so you weren't mm -hmm. using all your ammo because even in that one headshots were really random sometimes it would be like one two maybe headshots and their heads would explode sometimes mm -hmm. other times it would be like eight headshots and they'd still be coming at you they might fall down yeah <laughs> but, which made no sense yeah but uh but in this one like it didn't seem to have any effect you shoot them in the leg they're like yeah there's a bullet in my leg now i'm dead how yeah, it just it just me? felt like when they designed this one, they were like, "Okay, we've done the horror thing. This one's just going to be like about it's it's like a like a thrill wasn't, ride. It's a thrill ride type." It wasn't as bad as like uh, Resident Evil Five, where it was just like action set pieces more than it's horror. I played Five, so I don't know. Well, yeah. <laughs> I did as much as people hate Five. I didn't hate Five. Uh, they had a co op to it, which you know, just like Dead Space, takes the horror element out of it. Mm -hmm. But I found it was a fun game. It just probably wasn't an awesome Resident Evil game. But as far as the game goes, it was. I think it was a good game. Uh, I, I, saw, I still need to play through all of it. I think it gets, a, it gets a lot of shit, but it wasn't. You know, the story was not the greatest, and it was like an action set piece PC game. But uh, my first experience playing it was co op with my friend, and we had a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't so know. I might yeah, get I mean, a lot I thought... for it. But... I thought it was okay. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was, it was not my least favorite. You know, my least favorite was the same as everyone else's least favorite. Which one? Six. <laughs> oh, I still haven't played six, so I can't say. Six. I remember I, I took a picture six. when Resident <laughs> Evil, the Resident Evil Three remake came out. I took a picture with like all of my Resident Evil games in my collection, like, and put it on Instagram. And yeah. one of the guys that follows my Instagram, I only have the only game I have, the only copy of six I have is for the PS4. Okay. And he saw like the big picture of all my games, and his co his comment on the picture was, "You have way too many copies of Resident Evil 6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember you told me about that. I, uh, I have it for the 360. It's the archives edition that comes with like every other game, like a digital copy mm -hmm. of every other game, and uh, Degeneration, the movie, I think. Uh, I still need to and see it the last and one. And then I've got six for the Xbox One just to go with my complete series I've got now. So mm -hmm. I've got zero to seven in the Revelations. A lot of people are like, why wouldn't you get those all on PlayStation? Good idea. I don't know. Because, because, uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's my, that's that my long, that's my long uh, explanation for why I did it. <laughs> but uh, because of the Predator. Hunting Grounds, I know I said I'm not really into online games. Uh, yeah. A friend of mine convinced me to start playing Battlefront 2 again. Sweet. And uh, I guess that the, what was it, the May the 4th weekend? They mm -hmm. had a triple XP weekend for the online portion, and my no, friend was like, hey, that. let's play this together for the weekend, because we haven't seen each other since this COVID bullshit happened. So uh, yeah, I installed it, and it was like 100, 100 some gigs <laughs> to reinstall mm -hmm. it. Uh, well, at least it's not as bad as uh, Modern Warfare. It's like uh, 160 gig updates every time or some shit. No thanks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we I reinstalled it and we played it for I want to say a good four hours that that day. And I game. sucked at the original Battlefront when it comes to like the uh, the first person shooter part of it. Okay. For some reason, I was just terrible at it. But when it came to the dog fighting, like the air the uh, aerial fighting, I was awesome at that. Oh yeah, me too. Uh, anytime I would go after and try to get either the, slave the Falcon one or, or, slave or the Falcon. Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah once I would dominate game. every match I was in, I would dominate that aerial thing. But the first person shooting guy sucked, so I didn't really want to play the online of this. The only reason I bought this is because you told me that the single player was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was, it, it and was. it was. And um, unfortunately, it was before the MGC last year where I was like, yeah. giving away copies where I had like 10 copies of it. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. who wants one? I was like, oh, my monster was like, <laughs> I was but like, uh, I was like, so finally TV. playing the online portion of this, like the it's not first person anymore, now it's third person. Mm. It's really fun, and I was doing pretty good at it. I was playing as Actually, Obi Wan whenever I could, huh? You can switch back and forth, you can do either. Oh, I didn't know I could do it first person, it's yeah. just automatically in third for me. Sweet, yeah, it's, huh. I didn't know. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, I had a lot of fun. 
yeah, so much so that last campaign. weekend we did it again. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to, as much as I like playing the online, I like also like, you know, even with, I go back to the original Battlefronts just to pay even the offline against bots. And they kind of half-ass added that to the first one mm-hmm. where there's like a couple of things where you could do offline battles, but I don't know if they've done that at all with this one. But I mean, the amount they're supporting it, they might, you know, be well. They, yeah, it. they had just, I think, that weekend of the fourth release, like the final update with like a new multiplayer level. Yeah, they're actually doing the, was it a Kickstarter or a, something to try and get them to keep supporting it? Yeah, I mean, like, like the thing is, this game stuff. came out what three years ago? Yeah, I think so. And they're still supporting it, which is pretty amazing is for one of those types of games. Like how much money they lost on it. And... But it, it's gotten, like, I guess, like, they learned their lesson and they were like, okay, oh, this before, is the way it's going to be. Like I always say, it was before it was even released. They actually, like, everyone who was complaining about it because they had a, pre, a pre-release pre copy, you know, like an mm-hmm. early copy. But I bought it the day it came out. Like, I pre-ordered the deluxe edition and right away that stuff was out of it. Yeah, they patched it either like day one or day two to take out all that shit that everyone was so mad about. And I'm like, I've been I've been flying the banner of Battlefront two since it came out like that. It was such an yeah. awesome game. I it's great. It's still good at it online, but I still I unlocked everything there was to unlock up to the point where I stopped playing. I think they were just adding in the first couple of extra ships and stuff. Mm. And that was the only stuff that I hadn't. You know, Do you have uh, Count Dooku's exquisite pajamas? No, I, he okay. wasn't even in that's there. A, when that's I a thing. Him. That's Sorry. a thing. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a yeah. They they've been doing significant add-ons to it. So there's a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah, there's now. crazy amounts of stuff in it, and it's and the fact that, like I said, three years later they're still supporting it is just amazing to me. Yeah, and it's I still got a huge so. player base, which is great. Every time I'm I like you know how long it takes for us to normally get into a match on Predator oh, yeah. on Battlefront, it's like that. <laughs> There's still yeah, that many people playing. It's good. Um, I'm hoping they we get a Battlefront three and it breaks the uh, Battlefront curse. Yeah, we can get a, a three. But uh, you know, with how much money they lost on this one, who knows? I'm hoping they do though. That's it's fun. It's really fun. I'm really enjoying. It. And the funny thing is, I'm I'm really good at that first person, third person part of the game, and now I suck at the aerial combat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I couldn't do anything when I played it online. I was like, nope, I'm not doing this again. Or this is a reason to not throw out the first game then. And no. no. <laughs> you can go back to it for the dog fighting. And then the last game I've been playing, I just started playing about an hour before we started recording. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> Man, gonna yeah, I was playing this when you texted me and you were like, hey, let's. I'm ready, I'm home. I'm like, I'm like, okay, give me a minute, I need to go shave my head. I was like, I was playing this when you texted like, me. I shaved my head days ago. It's yeah. time to eat. People, bro, <laughs> I feel bad. It's <laughs> really me. strange, but it's really fun. Like Chris Parnell from Saturday Night Live is the narrator. Yeah, and it's it is fun. the weirdest choice, but it's actually because the the game is set up like a reality show. Yeah, he's also it's Jerry like the deadliest from, uh, catch. Rick it's like set up like the deadliest catch. <laughs> he's perfect on Rick and Morty too. Yeah, he's it. it's 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 a weird choice, but it works. The game nope. subject matter is weird, but it works. The gameplay is fun. The it's just uh it's basically a wacky turn off your brain and don't think too much about it game, right? Well, no, you kind of have to because like the the enemies like are levels above you and you need to so really be selective about what you attack because you'll just get annihilated if you do something that's way above your level. Oh, I mean like for like the over the top stuff like Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just it's it is. It's nuts. But, it's like I jumped out of the water and flopped onto a beach and ate people having a bonfire. <laughs> on the beach and then flopped back in the water. Like you have a jump button and you you just flop yeah, back into the water. Or <laughs> well, because they know they're making a shark RPG. They know how much it sucks when an RPG doesn't have a jump button. I know, right? But <laughs> it is just it is like I was attacking people on jet skis. I was crashing boats. I I sank a, a sailboat that was reminiscent of Jaws too. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot there's, of references. There's lots of references to shark movies in it. I've seen like, a SpongeBob reference in, in yeah, there. Yeah, there's yeah, the pineapples in there somewhere. Yeah, uh, but like I, I unlocked a secret when I was playing it. Um, I found like this glowing area and I rammed it, and it unlocked like the bottom of the ocean has a uh, a tub plunger. 
That's awesome. <laughs> and it was just kind of like, yeah, don't pull this. You might, bad things will happen. I was like, okay. <laughs> That's super awesome. Yeah, I, I'm definitely it's grabbing it next time I get a next yeah. time I get a chance. I'm not it's gonna... got a very strange sense of humor, and I'm I'm really digging it. Like I'm going to be playing this. Yeah, I'm surprised you got to it on Xbox. Uh, well, you know why? It's got 4K. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I was gonna try and pick. I mean, whatever. When I come across, I'll probably buy it because either way, it's not a, it's not it's not a huge, huge deal. But and the uh, weird thing yeah. is, when I pre-ordered this when it, I first saw it, so this was like I want to say back in February, I might have pre-ordered this on Amazon, mm. and then like a week before it came out, it said Amazon sent me an email saying we canceled your pre-order. Weird. Did you? And I was that? like. I thought that the game like got canceled, like uh, oh. the company went under because of the whole COVID thing. So I'm like, oh, did the game get canceled? I'm like, oh, that sucks. And then I see everybody talking about it all of a sudden, and I'm like, maybe it didn't. Like John John Riggs was streaming it. I'm surprised it sold in my area. I didn't. Think yeah. People... So I went on Amazon and bought a copy again. <laughs> well, anyone I talk to about games seems to have really generic tastes that aren't like a couple. I have like a handful of friends. And I only know one of them that bought it, and he bought the last copy they had for PS4. So I was just like, beat it, and then sell it to me for 10 bucks. Yeah. Gave it to me. But yeah, I, I highly recommend it. it is, it's different, and it's fun. Yeah, Because I remember it's, like, it's... when I thought I got it, I was like, oh, did you get it too? Because I was like, this has got to be right up Chris's alley. He yeah, it. The, guy <laughs> who is the guy who has a severe phobia of the ocean because of sharks... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, and plays all the games with sharks in them. Damn shark movie. <laughs> yeah, plays all the games, watches all the movies with sharks in them, and plays all the games with sharks in them. Hey, like I told you, how much I flipped out when I played PlayStation VR Worlds. Yeah, <laughs> I had a yeah. fucking panic attack. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You faced your fears head on. No, I didn't. I I pulled that headset off and ran. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I went like, no. <laughs> Smash. Hey. Basically, I, I took it off and no, I walked away. <laughs> hey, if, uh, if you see any more of those uh, for a good price, let me know. I kind of threw mine at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it was like right when I first got in the headset too, but I was just like, no! <laughs> Throw it on a pillow. <laughs> Actually, my neighbor's like, why is that fat ass screaming? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking right now. Okay. Like, why does he keep screaming? No, <laughs> no, no, please. Is he getting murdered up there? <laughs> you know what I think we should do now? I think we should spin it. I think you're right. Let's spin it. Do it. It's time for some backlog roulette. Alrighty. So, got your list ready? Let me bring it up. Yep. Uh, Alrighty. So. <laughs> Woo! That failed. Redo Mulligan. I spun it the wrong way. I spun it. I spun the wheel the same way that the ball was going. <laughs> All right. Woo. I love this roulette because no matter what it lands on, we win. Unless the game sucks. True, terrible true ass. True story. And we got thirty-five. Oh, oh, this is going to start something. You want to be starting something? What's it starting? Assassin's Creed. Oh, shit. <laughs> like Assassin's Creed 1? So yes, gotta do Assassin's Creed 1. All I got to say is hang in there. <laughs> it gets better. It gets better after Assassin's Creed 1. <laughs> at first, uh, I'm. I don't. Wanna, I'm not going to spoil anything about it. But at first, you'll probably love it until you go to the next area and realize you're doing a lot of the same stuff. Mm. It's it's cool. All I know is Kristen Bell's in it. Well, then there you go. There's a... so no matter what happens, I win. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a it's not a bad game by any, by any means, but two is it, leagues. It gets more refined, yeah. Leagues, yeah. Two is. But I've been looking for an excuse first. to play through that series, and there you go. Yeah. There you go. You got it. I'm pretty happy with what I got. Vice Project Doom. Ooh, so again, That's I picked a good up one. at MGC last year. Yeah, 
I got that with my tax return a few years back. It's it's kind of fantastic. Yeah, I've been wanting to play it for a long time. Now I got the dude back I in mean, the day. We didn't, play, we didn't put games that look like shit on our our list. No, so. well that that box play. art's kind of shit. <laughs> Pretty macho. Back when I was a kid, I went to Funko Land when that game first came out, and they had it sitting up on the shelf. And I was looking for a new game to buy. And uh, my friend Sonny, who was like the manager of that particular Funko Land, like goes, "Oh, look, we got this new game in Ice Spice Project too." But I looked at the cover and I went, "Like, I am not buying that." It's so awesome. <laughs> but it's now like, I look at it, I'm like, "Yes." It's like it's like how you envision, envision like most people's dads. <laughs> no, like, like you know who like, that is. You know who that guy is. That's Crease from Karate Kid. <laughs> is it really? It, no, it looks like him. Yeah, it looks kind of like he. It's Crease from Karate Kid. <laughs> yeah, it also looks kind of like he wants to be like Mel Gibson. Yeah, yeah. He's got Mel Gibson's but, hair. That's how I. That's how I envision like most people's dads picture themselves in like a when they're having a dream. Oh, macho, macho like, man. Day, all the all the ladies love me. So yeah, cling to me, baby. Yeah. Well, that's what we call pillow talk, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I'm pretty no, excited. That's a great game. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how old it is. So, it's, it was a later. Uh, I mean, how, how long? I mean, I don't mean how old. I mean how how long it is. So we'll see. Oh, I mean, it's it's. I want to say if you play, if you know what you're doing, you can play through it like in an hour. Two. Maybe a little bit longer, but it's like it's you, you got side scrolling stuff, you got driving stuff, and you got shooting gallery stuff. It's pretty cool. Sounds like a win win. Yeah, that's yeah. why. I, I can't remember where I heard about it from, but I've been I've been wanting to try it since I got yeah. it. And, yeah. It's one of those games I regret not buying back then. Like when Sonny was trying to get me to buy it at Funko Land, and she's like, "Check it out!" And I was like, "That cover art is terrible." No, like Phalanx. I hope same with know. Phalanx on the Super oh. Nintendo. Yeah, that game. I, I was like, I am not playing oh, that I don't game. Need to play Banjo I wish I did. Yeah. I wish I bought it back in the day. <laughs> what were you thinking? Well, uh, if you still know Sonny, you should apologize to her. I know. Sorry, Sonny. Tell her, tell her how right she was. You had my best interest at heart. I'm sorry. <laughs> She wasn't just trying to make sales. She was just no. trying to make your collection awesome. She was trying to make me happy. <laughs> yeah. Squandered. Mm-hmm. Well, I think this has been a pretty productive episode. Yeah, we've covered a lot of and shit. And before we uh before we have to split this up into two episodes, we should call it a day. Yeah. And uh maybe we'll just have to do another one uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Because now we kind of now it looks like we have like a system. <laughs> I like the system. Yeah. System. We do, this was a little bit more structured than than usual, I think, too. So that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hopefully somebody played along with us and uh, hope so. got a game that they'll be playing that they really like to. If you've played along, let us know. I want to know what you're playing and I want to play what I have. Like right now, I might even fire it up tonight. I'm going to go and play some Man Eater when we're done. <laughs> I feel bad for interrupting you to come chat with me for a bit. That's fine. I'm okay with it. It's totally consensual. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. I can tell my my cronies there are pointing the gun at you to to leave now then. (laughs) To make you Oh. You're going to do this podcast and not play with the shark game right now. Okay. Okay. Anyway. (laughs) Anyway. All right, everybody, thanks for sticking around if you've stuck around this long, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Did you want me to tell everyone where they can find me? Oh, shit. Yeah, just cut it. Just cut all that. Cut all that. We specifically said, yes, let's let's not take off in a a hurry because we talked too long, and that's exactly what we did. Yep. I was sitting there going, like, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? No. No. You know where to find my channel because you're on it right now. But I'm also on Facebook and Twitter as Corpse Blood Gaming. And Chris, you can find. I'm on the YouTube as the. Just do a search for the old ass retro gamer. I'm the only one. Yeah. A lot of live streams lately. I'm also on um, Facebook and Instagram as the old ass retro gamer. On Twitter, I'm OA Retro Gamer because they would not let me put ass in my name. O A F. OA, yes. <laughs> OA Retro Gamer. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm also on Twitch as the old ass Retro Gamer. I actually stream some of the Predator Hunting Grounds games that we we're playing together. Yeah, uh, awesome. But uh, in the Definitely. future, I do plan on streaming my roulette games on Twitch as I play through them. Awesome. So I'm probably going to try to stream the original Assassin's Creed. 
Yeah, definitely check out Chris's channel if you haven't. If I don't know why you're here, if you haven't, if you mm -hmm. don't know Chris's uh -huh. channel, because we uh, he's definitely more consistent and he's got a lot more cool shit to watch. But hopefully, I can get some stuff on here besides the <laughs> podcast too. It's not something I've completely given up on. It's just, it's the just passion's there. It's still there. It's just the time isn't. It proves to be <laughs> life's greatest challenge. <laughs> Hey, life finds besides, a way. Besides holding back life from life finds a way. Yeah, it's my life's greatest challenge besides holding back from playing Mortal Kombat 11. But someday <laughs> I'll own it. You want to right. borrow mine? <laughs> uh, links down below for everything. All our, all our socials and junk. And, and don't uh, forget, let us know what, what game you had for your roulette. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see some somebody playing along. I haven't heard anything yet, but Oh, maybe if maybe when I start streaming, I'll I'll be promoting it a little bit more, and maybe the hey, word will catch you've been, on. You've been shouting it out. You've been doing good. I job. do. I do. So I appreciate it, and I appreciate you hanging out with me again. Aww. And uh, we're pros, bro. <laughs> <laughs> great. Have a great one, guys. See you later. <laughs>